Don't forget that your skin is your largest organ and the sun can be your skin's worst enemy. Dermatologist recommended Neutrogena products offer the ultimate protection for your skin. From makeup remover wipes to Hydro Boost Water Gel Facial Moisturizer, BJ's has your entire lineup of Neutrogena skincare products. And now through October 15th, save $4 on any Neutrogena product at BJ's. Love your skin back and save now through October 15th, only at BJ's. Like there's a big part of me that thinks this guy is just kidding. Nope. Like this guy is an, a massive troll and he's just kidding. There's no way you put that in there without being like, no, this is, this is, there's no way anybody would think that that's the <laughs> thing that you would put in the movie <laughs> and not try to be funny. Eli, come on, man. A hundred, I promise you. First I of all, I promise you no. Vitaly no Versace's this guy already and Neil are having lunch right now laughing at you. <laughs> no, they're not. They're both having lunch by themselves thinking I'm a genius, I'm a genius, I'm a genius, I'm a genius. God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to God Awful Movies, where each week we watch another terrible movie so you don't have to. I'm your host, Heath Enright, and I'm joined by the Eli Bosnick. Eli, how's it going? Pretty good there, Robin Hood. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Yep. everybody's got a hint already as to what we're going to be doing. Yep. We'll get to that in a second. We also have veteran masochist Cecil, the full-time podcaster. Oh, Cecil, <laughs> our <laughs> professional colleague. That's a colleague, true co-worker. Thing. That is oh. true. You're our colleague. Welcome back. Wow, I'm going to kill myself on air. Hey, nice hey. to see you guys. <laughs> Great. Cecil Dwyer. <laughs> Great. All right. Let's just get right into it. Cecil. Cecil Dwyer. What are we going to be breaking down today? I was trying to push right past it. Cecil. Just tell us the movie, yep. maybe? No, it's fine. Yeah, no, we're watching Born Into Mafia 2. That's right. Which doesn't feel like a correct title. But anyway, Born Into Mafia 2. It's the story of the first nine minutes of Taken with Liam Neeson. So, you know, that's, that's great. I'm convinced the guy who makes these movies, Alexander, whatever his name is. Do you mean Vitaly Versace? Yes, yeah. Vitaly Versace. Versace, of course, was sitting next to someone on a plane who was watching Taken and he was like, I got it. I'm going to make that movie too. Also now. <laughs> that's exactly it's a good movie. It. I'll make it yeah. now. Me also. Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> it. That's him. That's the guy, Vitaly Versace, who faked having an Emmy and put that as his profile picture on IMDb. Yeah, that's the guy. Still there. So, uh, Eli, <laughs> how bad was this movie? Well, if you loved Born Into Mafia's script in a blender understanding of mob movies, just you wait till they get their hands on the trailer for Taken. <laughs> the trailer? <laughs> it's totally true. And uh, Cecil, by the way, were you lost because you hadn't seen the first one or did you go back and watch the first one? Really as fell behind, huh? Can you guys just quickly give me a synopsis? Like maybe like a couple paragraphs? Just, I mean, can somebody just jump in? Yeah, Eli, what happened in the first one? Yeah, sure. So the Berlin Wall falls in 89, I think it is. And yeah. Russians, they just get weirder and weirder ever since. <laughs> You're all caught up. Yeah. Okay. I think, I think you're there. All right. No, then I'm not lost at all, Heath. Yeah, no, no you got I'm, it. Yeah. Yada, I'm yada, right yada. Vitaly Versace from Cleveland, Ohio, <laughs> believes he has a big, important Russian heritage. He made a movie and he did yeah. another one. This one is the sequel, sort of. All right. <laughs> is there anything you'd like to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? I would like to nominate it for best worst on screen eating. I think, yeah. I, I think like a guy just with a bowl of mayonnaise just scooping it into his so mouth much better. is the fucking, it's the it's peak cinema. Okay. There's nothing better than that. That's like a <laughs> fetish video. It's amazing. Okay, but the ex-wife doing the power move with eating the banana was Banana my right, in yes. right, right, right in front of him. Right in fucking face. Right in face. Absolutely. Yes. So good. Yes. Establishing dominance. Yeah. And I didn't think this was going to be a God Awful Movie season liberally crossover, but I think we can all agree <laughs> I would it's... way rather watch you goat see a chicken on top of a bunt pan <laughs> as you did in your most recent video. My most recent video, I 100% accidentally goat see a chicken. You I absolutely go and you show it for You know. My, you keep a straight <laughs> face, but you absolutely know. I 100% goat seed that chicken. Though. You know what you're like? You're like a when porn people like start to stream on Twitch playing games, but then occasionally you're just like, 
bing, that's you. You know <laughs> yeah, your you audience do. is there for the goatsy, <laughs> but you're there for the chicken tips. Come on, be honest. You pull out a bunt cake pan before you start rolling. You're like, all right, come on. This is good. I know what this is. this is. I know what's happening. I didn't even lube it either, which is crazy. You I didn't grease totally, the pan? I totally, I totally should have just lubed that pan. It would have probably, wow. I don't know, lessened the goatsy. Bad little, etiquette. I don't know. I'm going to replace all of our <laughs> hyperlinks in this week's episode with links to that episode so that you think like people love it when I go see chicken. I got to I got to keep goats got to get on this board. <laughs> this is the beginning of your Nick Avocado downfall. Oh man, all I need is the two rings, the two ring finger rings and and I'm pulling the chicken apart. I think is the best. I think that's the next step. So Yeah, yeah. 100%. So everybody check out season liberally. There is a <laughs> Spatchcock of a chicken dish that it's, gets made recently. It's pretty exciting. It's a really good cooking show with one real weird episode. <laughs> <laughs> All right. For uh, for best worst, I'm going to go with best worst gift wrapping. And it is, it is good. so fucking... I was furious watching this yeah. happen. Because I'm like serious about my gift wrapping. Of course, yeah. This guy fucks up gift wrapping... A small book. Yep. Yeah. Uh, it's a rectangle. It's a I very know, small, easy to wrap, the easiest to wrap possible <laughs> thing. And he just <laughs> mangles it. I was so fucking mad. He could have taken the entire roll of wrapping paper <laughs> and laid it on the floor and then glued the book to his chest and done sort of a starfish motion. I would have preferred until that. Until the wrapping paper was no longer around him. That would have him. been artistic. That would, would have been, been like, you know, Marina Abramovich. He wraps that book the way I picture Heath pictures me wrapping all <laughs> objects. It was the Eli parking of gift wrapping. Of so. gift yeah. wrapping. Yeah. Exactly. There we go. A, a, a reference we can all oh, get into. So good. That's perfect. That is perfect. It is exactly that. It was like their command of the English language in this cast of <laughs> gift wrapping. Yeah. Like exactly. it, somehow you need perfect English to gift wrap. That's what we saw. How does, look, we'll get to it, but how does Vertali Versace convince these Americans who star in his movies to speak broken English, right? There's one non-English speaker in the movie, right? But everyone else is just a person from Los Angeles or wherever. Yeah, yeah, the main right. character, the guy who does that rapping and actually fucks up a bunch of English is clearly a native English speaker, but just yeah. does worse. Do you think he's calling cut and being like, hey, my friend, sorry, I had to be a real stickler on the stickler. <laughs> But what I actually wrote in the script is, have you got any nickels, my friend? No. <laughs> and they're like, oh, no, it's, it's just, have you got any nickels? We, we yeah, like, no, 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 that's not what I write. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, Ed Helms, I need you to stay on script. <laughs> and speaking of books, speaking of books, I'm going to go with best worst. I bought my daughter a book. Yes, absolutely. As he hinted, <laughs> he buys his daughter a book. The narration will mention it so often and randomly. Yeah. At one point, I thought like I had played the YouTube video in the background in a different window by accident, and I was <laughs> I getting a weird. For that at one point. Yeah, I'm just looking along the <laughs> top of my tabs for that little speaker, being like, "There's no way this." Oh, no, this I is had I had it up on IMDb, and I was sure that like something, just a teaser of it, had rolled. <laughs> I like click back over to it. Is it a real book? Did you guys look? To see if no. it's actually like a real book or was it? Oh, Robert DiCaprio, the greatest, yeah. the greatest acting coach of all time. Coach who wrote a book. That no. you randomly walk past a secondhand store and pick the book out. Yeah. In your local Christmas store. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Next to the license plate. Eli, we're saying that's not an industry guy who's well known. Robbie, what is it? Robert? Robbie, Robbie DiCaprio. Robert DiCaprio. Robbie DiCaprio. No, no, not, not in my circles at least. No. Okay. Maybe you can tap it. Not you grad. So clearly he just. He heard the name Robert and he was like, I'm going to add a last name. Don't, don't say a famous actor's name. <laughs> okay, Vitali Versace, it's time to think of an actor. DiCaprio. Who's the best actor? <laughs> Obviously, Robert Bob De Niro. Who's the second best actor? Uh, fellow teenage enthusiast, Ronald DiCaprio. So I combine their names and every actor who watches will be like, wow, Vitali Versace. That is what you call a deep cut. <laughs> Not everyone's going to get that one, much like tuberculosis. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, what you just heard is the VO for most of the movie. Pretty much. Most just of the, the movie and the author. Like yeah. that, while action happens on screen, sort of. Well, I think we're going to take a quick break before we get to all that, and then we'll be back to tell you all about 
Born into Mafia 2. I mean, I guess we could do that. How hairy are they? I mean, about as hairy as normal feet, I guess. One second. One second. I'll, I got to call you back. Hey, Cecil, what you doing? Yeah, who's on the phone? Oh, hey, guys. I'm just selling pics of my feet to people I meet online. Nice. I mean, what? Huh. Why are you doing that? Because of HelloFresh, man. Cool. They're going to love that intro. Heath? T- sorry, I mean, what's Hello Fresh? Well, with Hello Fresh, you get farm fresh, pre portioned ingredients, and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on Hello Fresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. Sure, but why does that have you selling pictures of your feet? Well, because season liberally is doomed, Eli. Who's going to want to learn to cook when they can just have HelloFresh delivered to their door every single week? I mean, can't you do some recipes that HelloFresh can't do? No, a fat chance. HelloFresh keeps your taste buds on their toes with 40 chef-crafted recipes to select from every week. From family-friendly to fit and wholesome, you'll find new ways and exciting recipes to try and love. Okay, so you can't do food. Maybe you do snacks and stuff. No dice, Eli. You can add snacks, sides, and more to your weekly HelloFresh order. Just simply shop HelloFresh Market and take your pick from a curated selection of over 100 add-on items. Yeah, it's true. I became a HelloFresh customer when they became a sponsor. And I love how it can load up not just on delicious meals, but also grab on-the-go snacks and more. That's why I, Heath Enright, personally endorse HelloFresh. So if someone wanted to sign up for HelloFresh, how would they do it? Really, Eli, in my moment of pain? Sorry, Cecil, it does sound good. Well, if you did want to break my heart, you could go to HelloFresh.com slash 50awful and use code 50awful and get 50% off plus free shipping. So I go to HelloFresh.com slash 50awful and use code 50awful for 50% off plus free shipping? That's right. All right. Well, I guess we'll let you get back to it. Yeah. I mean, after all, $175 a picture is a lot of money. All right. I didn't tell you guys what I'm selling them for. So do we have a deal or not? Yeah, we got a deal. Nice. Sweet. (laughs) Okay, guys. After the big smash success of our movie film Born into Mafia, the people are crying out for a sequel. And by people, I mean almost threes of my friends. Okay. uh, What we make it about? I'm glad you asked. Have you guys seen the movie Take Ended? No, I have not. Also, no. Me neither, leave it to Beaver. But you know what I have seen? The trailer someone filmed on their iPhone and released onto YouTube. Onto YouTube, exactly. And you know what they say, trailer is like the free sample of the movie. I mean, I guess that's true. How many times have you watched the trailer? Almost once whole time. I'm in. I'm in. All the I- I'm also in. Can we mention that I bought book for my daughter? Like 200 times. Sweet. Very sweet. I did, though. And we're back. And we're going to start in Media Res with a young girl on a cheap camera shouting, No, daddy. That's how we <laughs> yep. start. Yeah, I thought I'd click the wrong yeah. link for a second. <laughs> I totally thought. <laughs> That's reasonable. <laughs> it was a Heath Enright thing. <laughs> and we're looking at a bedroom. And a pe- <laughs> he's got he's got this bed Blocking the dresser from possibly even opening. And this is like, this is a room they chose in whatever house for this scene on purpose. Like this was Mm -hmm. the best spot Mm -hmm. they could put a bed in this entire house. Yeah. You you say bed. When you say bed, you are being very, very loose with that term. It is a rolled up (laughs) cheap mattress on the ground. There's no box spring. This is just a, 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 like a, a shitty futon mattress that somebody threw on the ground. This is like an air mattress from Target yes. used yeah. as yes. is with like yes. a sheet around it. Yeah. 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 The box says like, die on this when you buy it at Target. <laughs> it's, it's not great. Also, let me save our audience tremendous confusion because the voiceover now kicks in and says, 
that kidnapped my daughter, except we will never see his daughter be kidnapped or go through the slavery process that this movie will intercut yes. with the movie. Yeah. These are three completely different characters that we will never know anything about whatsoever. <laughs> so for the re the entire movie, I was like, because one of them is dark haired. I kept being like, is that the actress who plays the daughter? No, no, it is not. What very obviously happened is that Vitali Versace, American treasure, was like, I'm making the taken. And then the girl who agreed to play the daughter was like, I'm not taking my shirt off and letting you attach me to an IV. And he was like, no problem. All women are the same. And they were like, yeah, I feel like that's how you might feel. Sounds about right. Are you are you sure? Because maybe that maybe this part three is going to reveal that the daughter makes makes it into the Ooh. thing. You know, I mean, I, I realize Yours has plausibility, Eli, but I suspect we don't know what's happening in part in Born Into Mafia 3. That's true. We haven't seen That's part true. three yet. So yeah. we don't know. This is a 2016 movie. So <laughs> for the last six years, he's been trying to it's piece together the, the $4,000 yeah. he needs for the budget. It's been bubbling. And uh, he's not there yet. He needs the iPhone 11 6 Plus. So uh, we just, yeah, we got to get him a new iPhone. Vitali, I have an iPhone 13. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All yours for the making, buddy. All right. <laughs> Seriously though, Vitaly, I think I like we joke about this. I think he might be listening. Vitaly, we will help fund part three. <laughs> we will <laughs> absolutely <laughs> fund part. Three. I know how, exactly how much you spent on this movie. I'll fund it via PayPal while doing this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I just want to make sure I have this right. The guy we're watching in this scene is supposed to be Vitaly Versace's character from the first one. That guy's brother. That's like a secret brother in the United States that that the Vitali character from the first one just found out about kind of recently? Yes, the CIA agent dad guy, yes. Okay. <laughs> oh, this guy was in the first one? Yeah, well, no. no. Um, the voiceover, that guy, he was a character in the first one. Oh, This okay. is his brother. The voiceover is the main character from yeah, the no, first the, one. Yeah. The voiceover is because you never see the face, and I never saw the first one. So what I got was... Just like some weird voiceover and then a, a flashback to clearly his previous movie. And I was like, okay, I guess they're brothers or not. But bro step, they're like stepbrothers or half brothers. Something, yeah. Brother from another mother. So I don't, I don't know. I don't know how it works. They <laughs> met on the black casting couch, which they will say is the name of a film company. Is the name of a film, which yeah, to right, be fair, sure. I am guessing Vitali has some experience with. <laughs> That's how you meet a stepbrother. But yeah, that is the only extent to the earlier movie that there's okay. any connection. Right. So if you missed the first episode, don't worry, podcast listener. You're not um Okay. Yeah. Not gonna so, have trouble. Right. But now we're now we're watching the new protagonist. We watch him get out of bed. Mm -hmm. We watch him take a shower, and I'm pretty sure pee in the shower that we <laughs> see for a second, which is a weird move. Yeah, I don't think. That was what Vitaly was going for with the slow panning shot down during the shower, right? I think he's just... But that's what was happening. But that's that's what it felt like for sure. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> and they also show us, they go back after the shower to the bedroom again. Now the bed is in a different spot of the bedroom. He like moved it, uh -huh. I guess, to yeah, open yeah. The, sure. the drawers. The drawer, yeah, you got to get in. And right yeah. there next to the bed is the garbage bag of cum <laughs> tissues very clearly. Just clean yes, it up super, for the shot, man. Super Art. obvious, yeah. Vitali very clearly brought this guy in and was like, you can just use my bed, my friend. I even didn't make it for you. <laughs> <laughs> Don't mind the Febreze bag from Glad on the floor. It'll be fine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then, then we watch this guy Put on his shoes, like slowly, yeah. tie both shoes. A lot. Get up and leave the room and then tie shoes more back tie in the same room. Again. Yeah. And then we got to the next scene. You have to understand, Heath, that's a keeper scene. And as an editor, that's gold. You want to make sure yeah. you show that as much as possible. Whether it's in time <laughs> sequence or not, you want to show it again and again and again. It's oh. just, that's If you ever go to the movies with Vitaly Versace, when a character enters the room wearing shoes, he turns to you and goes, see, that's bad movie making. We don't even <laughs> see them put on shoes. We have we no idea where their shoes, shoes came from. We have to establish the shoes for the shot. It's very important. I thought maybe the, the knot immediately became untied on one of the shoes and he just went back in and had they had to show it all to like <laughs> so we wouldn't get lost about what had happened. My favorite piece of sort of prop in the movie 
is the lighthouse tchotchke on top of the dresser. Yep. It's like a gigantic <laughs> comic dildo sized mm-hmm. fucking gigantic tchotchkes of a lighthouse just sitting on top for no, like, you know, it's what CIA people have on their, on their dressers. I mean, let's be honest. Yeah. That's what they have. It's how they decorate. It's what your aunt brings back from her trip to Maine. She's yeah. like, oh gosh. Oh, I had so much fun. You know, yeah. they tell you people are friendly and they really, oh, they really were. Your your uncle had such a good time and then he died. <laughs> Her and KGB agents, very similar in terms of their yeah, collecting exactly. habits. Yeah. So now we get the baffling scene title two weeks from now. From now. From now, <laughs> yes. Apparently we're watching the future, I guess. I don't know. I didn't get this at all. <laughs> Yeah, he's very unclear where he's hopping around within the cinematic universe, but but it's two weeks from him getting out of bed, his daughter being kidnapped, a different person is being kidnapped. Okay, like I Bye. get he just had like weird wording for two weeks later, which is what he was yes. going for. But yeah. like we couldn't just watch the guy wake up and pee in the shower two weeks later. It couldn't be like the same day to start the movie for both of these scenes? Yeah, no, it couldn't. Right, and more importantly, <laughs> it's not two weeks later. He means two weeks earlier, but who, whatever unfortunate soul on this cast <laughs> tried to explain the word earlier to v- Vitaly Versace <laughs> oh, no. threw themselves out of that hospital preparation window. It is technically two weeks from then in like absolute value time. Terms. Sure, yeah. yeah. And there you go, <laughs> see? And we see the establishment shot here is of a young girl walking down a hall with a guy who clearly has tried to take a long sleeve pinstripe shirt and turn it into a turban. Right. That is what we've seen. And there's no top on it. So he's kind of got like a place for maybe a yarmulke if he wanted at the top. You know, it's yeah. not covering his whole head. So he could go little- kind of both ways. I thought it was like a Russian mafia chef. When I first saw him, and I was like, okay, Ooh. interesting. That's my context, and that- I'm looking at a Russian mafia chef. He's doing that kick dance on his yeah. knees or whatever. <laughs> exactly. you know? Yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah, Pergosian. But then I was like, oh, <laughs> yikes. That was the movie showing us a Muslim guy, because yeah. then we yes. see yes. a second, according to the movie, Muslim guy who has yeah. a, a literal plaid curtain that's yeah. been wrapped into a... Uh, sort of a turban in their head. Yeah. He's wearing an evil karate gi, like yep. black and gold. Yes. yes. They very clearly yes. like <laughs> Cobra Kai. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Cecil. <laughs> Cha-ching. That was great. Heath Cheers. Cheers. They oh paused the screen and taken and they were like, well, I don't know where to get one of those, but Cheers we will he. get a karate gi. So they had... <laughs> They had that. Had a big tiger on the back. <laughs> yeah. And like, I'll just make this easy for the listening audience right now. This, all the even numbered scenes will be the story of the movie. All the odd number scenes will be various places in the timeline. They never matter and they are not in order of three <laughs> different women being sex trafficked and or photographed yes. and or sold yep. for their organs and or given heroin. Very confusing. Yeah, but they are, they did really hit the market though here when they said that they're making sure that they're getting enough women, beautiful women to to photograph for a calendar. It's because that's something that still happens where you Obviously, photograph yeah. an actual print calendar somewhere. <laughs> print calendar, somewhere. absolutely. <laughs> that's how you make your money on top of your heroin trade yeah, and your absolutely. Uh, trade. Yeah, You gotta launder it some way. Yeah, the, the women of the Tuesday night strip club <laughs> calendar as they were shooting. So now our protagonists, like we teased in the beginning, he walks by a Christmas themed secondhand store and sees very prominently this acting book in the window. Robert, Robert DiCaprio. DiCaprio. Yes. Mm-hmm. The Sid Field of this universe, I guess. Mm-hmm. Or whatever. <laughs> by the way, on the front of the cover of the book, it says the thickest acting book ever. That's what the it says thickest. on the cover. The, the thickest. thickest. You never judge a book by its girth. That's ridiculous, yeah. by it's, the way. It's like a 30-page <laughs> book, to be clear. Okay? It like, is. It's very thin. And he very clearly just like glued a new cover yeah. onto an existing book. Yeah. Uh-huh. And I don't mean like a wraparound cover. I mean just a single eight by eleven sheet of paper <laughs> to the cover of another book. Yeah. 
and it's next to it's in in the window next to used license plates. <laughs> yep. Yeah. I mean, th this I is like one of those encyclopedias for kids that Cecil learned about stars and planets from, and <laughs> right, where all his dreams were right? stored as a child. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Except for my dad stole it from the store. He didn't buy it. He'll <laughs> yeah, be exactly. ridiculous. What was he made out of money? We had ten dollars. <laughs> And he's, he's narrating about how he'd kill anyone to protect his daughter, which is weird because his daughter hasn't been kidnapped yet, but he will constantly Two reference that she's been yeah. kidnapped like <laughs> in his own internal monologue. Yeah. And then the last thing here, because this is just so great, we have to see him meeting the daughter and the way they've chosen to do this oh, it's so good. is he's chopping wood shirtless. <laughs> not a good look. <laughs> but... <laughs> It's not in the woods. He's like no. next to a highway where you buy like propane. Yeah. A Chevron station. It's so yeah. jarring. Imagine driving past that and being like, well, that's a crime. There's some crazy yeah. crime happening there. I need to call the police. His physique, he looks like Stretch Armstrong. Like he yes. does. He 100% looks smooth. Like I've never seen anybody <laughs> so smooth. And can I say, Cecil, corn syrup, the problem in both of those cases. <laughs> <laughs> Both this gentleman oh, and okay. Stretch oh, Armstrong. Brutal. A lot of corn syrup in there. Very true. Very true. But he's like super smooth and he's out there with his shirt off and he's he's hacking away and he's literally next to a Chevron station and a busy highway. <laughs> yep. And then his, his daughter starts sneaking up on him because they show her feet on boots trying to sneak up on him. And then he tries to use his very dull, reflective axe to try to see behind him. But you can clearly see nothing in the axe at all. Yeah, like, we're looking into the axe. Yeah. Yeah. In a good movie, they would be like, oh, like there's a scene from Highlander where a guy, it's not a good movie, but he cuts the guy's head off or whatever. And there's like a, there's like a scene where you're looking in a mirror and you could see someone. Like that's a way to show a reflective scene. There's no reflection, man. You're nope. just showing like a fucking dull faded axe head that he's supposed to be looking into. Right, like like the katana in Kill Bill. Like you're looking at it, you could see the mirror. Right? Yeah, exactly. right? It's perfect, but instead here it's just like, well no, this, we didn't take the time to polish it. The only rusted old axe that they could yeah. get on this set. <laughs> you can't see shit. Well, again, I don't think Vitaly Versace, who has seen both those movies, I promise you, knows that those are moments where someone's looking in a mirror, right? I think he was just like, okay, so if you're ever going to do a big surprise turnaround hug, first, you have to look at a metal for a moment <laughs> because that's how tough guys prepare for a big hug. They okay. look at a metal. Also terrifying is that this is a father and his daughter meeting up for the first time yes. in the movie and the first time in a long time, according to the movie. And this actor was like, I will need be shirt off, sweaty, doing axe chop to, because it's awesome. Yeah. And that's how like this, this other actor playing his daughter has to like meet him and hug him. It's so fucking creepy. She clearly doesn't want to touch him because her hands, when she hugs him, are balled into Straight fists. out. Yeah. And they know she doesn't actually hug him. She, he like picks her up and he's like, oh, what are you trying to do? Scare me. And he's like, and it's like kind of low. So you can't really hear what he's saying. He's kind of just... He's making up improv speech kind of. And she's like, no, I wasn't trying to scare you. But the whole time she clearly doesn't want to be touched by him because her hands all. are balled into fist yeah. and straight out. Like she just got knocked out. Like one of those people when they get knocked out and they do the fencing response, mm -hmm. that's what she's doing while he's holding her. Like straight yeah, out she, arms. Yeah. Like a toy soldier just came back from a dramatic moment in a movie. Yeah. <laughs> And then, as though they heard us making fun of the last title card, we now get one that says, just before the kidnapping. <laughs> <laughs> this, this character will be kidnapped soon, but first, our movie film scene now. <laughs> Next. <laughs> then that. Okay. So, this is where we got to talk about his dad. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> Pops? If you know Howard Stern's cast, you know who his dad is. Yes. Oh, yeah, this is Jeff the Drunk from the Howard Jeff Stern the drunk Show. From Howard Stern. Yeah. Okay, so Jeff the Drunk is just sitting in the relative background <laughs> of 94% of the scenes in this movie. <laughs> the rest of this movie, yep. he's there. Sometimes he's in hats. Sometimes he's doing something, but most of the time he's not. Most of the time he's just in the like scenery of the movie. Even in scenes, we'll point it out, where he absolutely should not be there as a character. 
I'm going to spoil this for you, podcast listener. This is supposed to be his dad who's missing an arm. Jeff the Drunk is not missing an arm, but it's supposed to be his dad who is missing an arm, and he will just randomly be in various <laughs> scenes and say yeah. things like, you doing okay, son? Okay, just to be clear, <laughs> this is the most famous actor in the cast. Right. Absolutely, and they very yes. clearly just smushed this guy, Jeff the Drunk, into the movie a few times so they could write on the front, on their poster, starring Jeff the Drunk from the Howard Stern Show. <laughs> Who do they imagine is scrolling through movies and thinking, I just want to see Jeff the Drunk's other work, right? Like, I loved him <laughs> yeah, no, in he, Howard Stern. But, like, but, how are his acting chops? Yeah. Well, <laughs> check out this movie. I will say when they show him when he first sits down, he's in a Bills outfit. And I'm like, he looks like every single Bills fan I've ever seen in my entire life. <laughs> he actually is from upstate New York. <laughs> yep. It's, not, it's all it's near, it's together. near Albany, but you know, similar. Yeah. 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 No. So now we're going to cut to his daughter's birthday. Hold on. There's a line. There's a line, Eli, just really quickly. There's a line where the guy says, out of nowhere, the main character says, a lot of guys in the CIA are very patriotic. And then that's the end of that entire thought. Yep, yeah, no, it's just as part of his narrative. <laughs> his narrative is kind of like if you found ChatGPT and you were like, talk about the CIA and your daughter being kidnapped. But then you programmed your computer to be like, say more now for like 8 million versions. <laughs> So what it, the sort of twisted psychosexual fugue state yeah. that came out at the end of 8 million chat GPT prompts, that's the narration of this film. This is where we get the worst gift wrapping ever really quick. I just want to... Yeah, oh God. <laughs> I just want to point that out. And also the worst using a marker to write words. So like they show us the gift wrapping and then he has to write the card and it's insane we well, find that's out, supposed to be Jeff the Drunk. That's that's Grandpa. Yeah, we find out later that they made Jeff the Drunk write the card, and he has a paralyzed right arm, and he's righty. So they made this lefty guy with a paralyzed right arm write the card. I don't know why. <laughs> so he could star in the movie? Oh, Jesus yep. Christ. It also weirdly says, to my 18-year-old granddaughter, right on the crowd. On the, like, I don't know, man. That feels like you're trying to get out of a crime or something. Yeah. I it just uh, it feels like an al like a pre alibi. Yeah, I feel like there was a lot of checking and double checking of IDs when this movie was made for <laughs> yeah. for good reasons. Every sentence that says like who is 18 by the way in it never good. Never good. Whatever was yeah. happening with that. <laughs> yeah. Basically, whenever Vitali Versace asking who is 18 is a storm at morning or whatever that fucking morning is. <laughs> yeah, like that's well, always yeah. it's pink sky always in the morning sign. or whatever. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I want to say too, at a certain point, now this isn't an editor thing, but at a certain point, I want to say two or three times, they either, so what you'll see is maybe two or three frames of a credit pop up. So they'll, you'll be watching it and then you'll just see a, like, a, like very, very quickly a credit be like, boop, boop, and go right away. And they either left a tail of a credit on for too long and accidentally cut it and left it like a couple frames on or they never extended it. So they wrote it out, but it was only like a frame long and then they never extended that frame farther than two frames. And so you're constantly seeing like, am I being, am I, are you trying to like subliminally manipulate me right now? Like what is happening right now? <laughs> Into watching more of these? Yeah. Yeah. So now we're going to cut over to his daughter's birthday. I'd like to point out that we open with a very, very obvious cameraman in the shot. Like just there, just fucking there. <laughs> and this is also where we meet the mom. Right. And I just want to point out the way this actress walks out was like she had never used human legs before, <laughs> right? They were like, hey, no, you're going to be in the movie and also you'll use your new leg transplants for the very first time. Have you ever seen that image of Elon Musk where they show his his body and it looks like he's a little guy inside of a mech? Yes, exactly. Belly. Yeah, well, he, he looks, looks like, like that, that alien from Men in Black. Yeah, <laughs> She looks like, like there's an alien inside her pilot in her body like a mech. She's doing a Krang thing for sure. Yes, yeah. exactly. The fact that her first line isn't sugar water, I don't yeah. really, really doesn't make a lot of sense. The daughter comes out, it's 9 a.m. The sun is beating down, right? She's so excited. But Vitali Versace has made her wear this very uncomfortably short club dress that she will 
pull at to try to make longer <laughs> through the entire scene. Just a, a desperate attempt to wrap it around her feet yeah. and be in a cocoon of not yeah. in this movie. <laughs> this is also where we meet the new stepdad. Question, do you think this gentleman's is... Okay, here's the question. <laughs> this guy is something else. <laughs> is this gentleman doing a sarcastic performance in Voltali Versace's mm. movie or... Hmm. Is he insane? Hmm. Okay. <laughs> well, it's only those two. <laughs> I think I think it's clearly the first one. He's making fun of Vitaly Versace. Yeah. Because he he comes in and he's got his son too. So it's like David and David Jr. Yes. So he comes in and he has, I think, a British accent, or he he does some kind of accent. Yeah. And then the kid, the kid, <laughs> the kid says hi too, but in a in an entirely different accent. But I thought like the kid would keep changing to like fuck with, fuck with the dad and make it follow him. Because that's what, that what seemed to be happening. But yeah, I have no idea. I think they were just making fun of the movie. Here's what I think happened. I think Voltari Versace was like, and for the movie, Craig, I want you to do a British accent. And he was like, what is a British accent? I, I've never heard one of those. And he was like, what is a British do you person? know Toucan Sam? And he was like, yeah. He <laughs> was like, okay. I want you to imagine Toucan Sam got into like a really bad car accident, like a bad one, <laughs> a bad one. And they weren't sure he was going to make it. And he recovers, but like not all the way. And he was like, oh, nailed it. Yeah, absolutely. I can do that voice because yeah. he will talk like this. Throughout <laughs> well, the see, movie. was everything OK? Yeah. <laughs> sounds like Kermit the Frog. He sounds amazing. The guy sounds great. Also, by the way, throughout this entire, this is where you first notice it, but it happens throughout the rest of the movie whenever they're in a noisy environment. So they're on a street, right? So things are going by. They are not using a boom mic or they are, and it's just too far away from the action because what you're hearing constantly is the cut after it's over because they don't want to get the road noise. Yep. So you're hearing very obvious, bad, not even faded cuts. So they'll be talking and be like, eh, and then you'll hear the hiss and then, and it basically gets cut off and it's so fucking jarring. And then out of nowhere, the music will start and stop for no reason whatsoever. Mm -hmm. You're, it's unclear why the music even plays at certain points or when it starts and stop. And it just randomly, jarringly in the middle of a scene will just end. It's outrageous. It's like they, they shot the movie in a Snapchat filter that has a certain amount of music behind just it. Just amount of you know, time. Yeah. But it's, a third, but it's a TikTok thing maybe. So yeah. it's 30 seconds and yeah. that's why it cuts in and out. Don't want to have to pay royalties. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. But he gives his daughter the book and she doesn't care about it at all. But then new stepdad, he gives her a car. It's a brand new <laughs> BMW. No, it's not. No, it's a 2008. <laughs> yeah. It's 2008, like three series. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good point. I like that the new stepdad also roasted Jack, our protagonist here, because He's like, oh, Jack, you should come uh, come to the party. Come on in. And the ex-wife's like, no. And <laughs> Dave, the stepdad, is like, no, nah, Jack's fine. He doesn't, <laughs> he doesn't even have a job. That's He's fine. What, what's it. he doing today? Obviously nothing. Just oh, come on in. And what is Jack, this guy, a podcaster? Come on. Right, exactly. Out. <laughs> Jack's like, yes, I do. I have a podcast to record, right? You don't know. <laughs> Dave's like... You're wearing sweatpants, man. I know you're not going to like a real job, right? Well, what do you think I record a podcast in? Leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> I, I enjoyed their uh, their roasty interaction for sure. It was great. It was super great. Yeah, The dad, the stepdad too, at one point turns to the, the dad and is like, don't worry, I'll take care of your daughter. And I was like, what kind of movie is this? What is happening mm -hmm. right now? Yeah. At one point he warns her about the car. She gets the car and he's jealous and he goes, be careful. A car can be like a weapon. <laughs> Dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> so good. Yeah. All right. But you're probably wondering to yourself, okay, Eli, now I know the family dynamic, but what's this guy's living situation? And that's where we're going to start with the ever so subtle introduction. This is Catherine. And it is, in fact, Catherine. Yeah, the VO is like, this is Catherine. I was like, okay, I believe you. You can just... <laughs> You can just do whatever you want, movie. Yeah. 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 You can have her be Catherine. This is Cecil's best worst. I think this, at one point, the actress will say scrambled eggs and bacon. And so that is the only evidence we have for what the intention of this food was. Her, her line is, 
bananas, eggs, and bacon. This is life, Jack. That is exactly what mm-hmm. she says. <laughs> yep. And it is... I mean, that sounds good. Ho- no. It is no. horrifying no. to behold. It is not yeah. it what, is ho- what we look, see. I'm not saying the woman who is in this scene has done porn. I'm saying the worst thing she's ever had to do on camera was eat these scrambled eggs, okay? <laughs> Pretend to eat these scrambled <laughs> eggs. Yeah. Nobody, nobody, I mean, look, you've had more realistic tea parties with your kid with plastic food than this. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, genuinely, when your kid gets that little set and sits around the table and pretends to eat, all, they pretend better than these two actors in this scene who have never have anything on their fork and constantly hold a thing up to their mouth to drink <laughs> and then are clearly not drinking anything at all. The yeah. whole scene. We could spend the entire review just talking about the dynamic of him pouring her a sippy cup of apple juice. It's amazing. But you just gotta watch it. Two tablespoons of apple juice. You just gotta watch it. Clearly, they like caught themselves doing the like fake sip of an empty cup several times. <laughs> and then finally, like the movie yelled at itself. The VO came on and was like, she likes apple juice. Get her that now. There's real apple juice in the real glass. And then he's like, you like apple juice, right? And he goes and gets her a little bit so they can have a tiny sip of the running out apple juice that they got yelled at. Less for, than a quarter of a cup. For, yeah, for sure. Too much. Let me be clear what's happening in this scene, right? Because there's nothing happening, but let me be clear what is happening, right? This is supposed to be the like, Oh, prick, don't you remember that time in Moscow? (laughs) I've never worn panties since. (laughs) Except this woman is saying it the way you see people say, like, I'm being treated well in an Al-Qaeda hostage video. (laughs) She's blinking her eyes furiously in Morse code. Yeah, Constantly being interrupted by things like voiceover talking about how much apple juice she has. Shots of Jeff the Drunk, who is just sitting there in the background of the scene. Sometimes, not all the time. Sometimes he kind of teleports away. (laughs) At one point, the soundtrack of a Christmas movie breaks in and they all just stop and listen to it like it's It's passing (laughs) through the room. Okay, it's the best when she's like, hey, let's talk about your sexual life. And immediately they pan over to Pops just sitting there in the (laughs) corner. <laughs> I don't think they meant to infer that. Oh, also, so good. This is the first time, but not the last time. They will constantly confuse the CIA and the KGB. Yes. And look, yes. oh, do you think they confused them? Yeah. I think they were claiming that he was, because they say he was part of the CIA and part of the KGB at different times. I, th- I thought they were going for he was like, a spy for both at different times in his career. Oh, Yeah, but sometimes they're within the same sentence, right? They'll be like, I remember when we worked for the CIA, we fought Osama bin Laden for the KGB. (laughs) (laughs) It was a semicolon, Eli. That was a semicolon. Yeah, and look, I know the maker of this movie is Russian, but they know those organizations are supposed to be different, right? They're supposed to be. (laughs) My favorite explanation, you you know, you you hit it right on the head, Eli, when you're talking about that specific scene, what it's supposed to be. But her explanation is she's, her, her, like what she talks about in the scene is the things they've done in the past. And one of the things that they've done in the past in Afghanistan, by the way, it's not Afghanistan, it's Afghanistan. He hijacked a 747 from the president of Afghanistan to go to Paris for a birthday party for his daughter while they were on deployment (laughs) from the CIA to capture Osama bin Laden. And then they recycled the 747 for money. (laughs) Yep, That's what happened. A hundred percent. Sold it at a used car lot. Yeah, apparently. It's what you know when you have an extra seven forty seven. You just call Bill down the road at the chop shop, and he's able to take that right off your hands, no problem whatsoever. Okay, not exact. Cecil's not exaggerating. The exact words from this <laughs> this lady spy, Catherine, and she's like, "Remember, you sold the seven forty seven to recycling. We made lots of money." <laughs> exact words. There's a part in this too where they say she like specifically asks him. Because she keeps talking about his sex life. Like, everybody loves you. All women love you. You're a super hot dude, right? And he keeps on just saying like one word or two word answers to her to sort of move the conversation along. But at one point, she's like, what about all those hot single moms? Are you still dating all those? Like, it's a porn ad. Like, it's one of those ads that come up while you're watching porn. Yep. I loved how the VO kept jumping in. This happens throughout the movie and we get a really great example of it here. Vitaly Versace on the VO jumps in and he he has these long things that he wants to say that don't really make any sense, but he makes the actors like physically vamp 
and just do stuff silently while he's talking for a while. Do whatever he's saying. Yeah. <laughs> so they look like crazy people for like a minute at a time. Their their conversation completely stops and they like pretend. <laughs> just, they're just <laughs> they're doing physical yeah, because they know he's talking. Yeah, they'll just like. They'll do like infinite amounts of bites out of an empty bowl while he's like, the thing about the CIA, KJB, you must understand, is it is like wearing a surfboard to your nearest Grackle factory. There's just And they're just like, juice, I'm drinking infinite it. Infinite sip right. of apple juice drooling no. down their yeah. chin. <laughs> the only other thing I have to say about this scene, because it's spiritually important to me, is that in the scene, she announces that she has to use the bathroom and goes oh, yeah. and uses the bathroom and comes back and it, there's no anything to it. This actress was just trying to get out of the room. She was like, I got to take a shit. <laughs> and just thought she was like, this is gold. Keep rolling. I felt like she's trying to get out of the movie. Seriously. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. No, she was, she did. She's however long she's in that bathroom, that actress was trying to force that glued window open. And then she came back and was like, it doesn't open. We can do the rest of the scene. <laughs> okay. But, her timing was perfect because Jack, oh, our yeah. protagonist, was just about to start flirting. He was like, you're fun. I'm so glad you came over. Gonna shit now. And shit no. <laughs> now is time for shit. Time for yearly shit. Ding, ding. So good. <laughs> and you know what? I think we're all having the same reaction to the movie that, <laughs> that Catherine was having to Jack. So we're going to take a quick break <laughs> and then we'll be back with even more Born Into Mafia 2. I go take shit now. <laughs> okay, my friends, I call to order this meeting of evil Islamic organ salesmen slash sex traffickers slash modeling agency. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay, so for, yeah. first things first, I, I really, really don't have time to do another training with you guys. Okay, we hire the girls as models, then we give them drugs, then we sex traffic them. And then we sell um, their organs. Yes? Uh, yeah. Chris. Quick, quick thing. Uh, doesn't the heroin ruin the organs? Yeah. We're a black market organ seller, Chris. People aren't coming to us for quality ingredients. Well, what, hmm. what if we use one organ? Do we, do we keep sex trafficking them with like one kidney or are they exclusively for organs at that point? I mean, that is dealer's choice, but please, people, keep it in the appropriate section, right? It is all about FIFO in the warehouse, okay? FIFO. Is it first in, first out? Yeah, sorry, first boss. In, I got it. Yeah, no, I got it. But I got a client on the phone. He says instead of the girl he ordered, we sent him a heart. Ah, oh, this is exactly what I'm talking about. Tell him we'll send him a refund. Yeah, no, he doesn't want a refund. He wants to order another, actually. Well, nice. Sometimes that happens. Yeah. Bonus. And we're back. When we left off, Jack started flirting and Catherine immediately left to go take a shit. And now we're going to make the natural segue from that to the human trafficking warehouse slash heroin dealer slash modeling agency. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Where Miss September is posing in front of a green <laughs> sheet for the calendar, I guess. Okay, podcast listener, I want to be clear because there's no physical way for us to expose you to it. But like, I was worried the episode would be too short this week because a not insignificant percentage of this movie is this shot of these women posing not too sexily, but definitely as sexily as Vitaly Versace could convince them to pose <laughs> yeah. in a bikini. For the McDonald's lunch that they got, yeah. Right, while they get unrelated directions, right? This is the yeah. first time that, for instance, he's like, all right, turn to the left, and she doesn't. And I realized, oh, no one involved in this movie knows what turn to the left means. There's no <laughs> concept of left. One of these women was just fucking with the movie, too, I think, because they were, like, giving, you know, the directions for the, the, the shoot. And she started doing, like, the quad stretch on one leg. Yeah. And just, like, <laughs> totally yes, does. the one she who does two yoga. Yoga. She was like, I'm going to get my yoga in and get a McDonald's sandwich deal. I don't know. Yes. She looks like she was stretching up to do the jogging at the end for the credits. Like, that's what she looked like she was doing. Yes. Yeah. No question. And they, I also have to point out that they, they will constantly get back to the same, like, three girls 
modeling and posing and different things, but they haven't convinced all of them to be in bikinis. First of all, no. none of them are in bikini bottoms. They all said no to bikini bottoms. You're right. Two of them are in bikini tops, but like one of them's just in like a wool dress. Yes. Right. Not even a particularly short or revealing one. Yeah, no. Nope. It doesn't fit. It's not form fitting. It's kind of baggy. Mm -hmm. Sort of just, it's just like a going, like maybe going to the library dress. Like yeah. that's where yeah. you would wear yeah. it. Going yeah. to the, mm -hmm. seeing friends for a, a fall activity dress. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, picking apples. Perfect. Yeah. yeah. Like a pumpkin patch visit. This is also <laughs> where we're introduced to the mystery of the movie, which I'm going to solve for our audience right now. So this is a nursing careers yes. office. Yes. It but I is. spent the entire film wondering what the fuck this room is because... In this scene, we see a bunch of choking posters on the wall. Yeah. Just like the walls are covered in various incarnations of choking posters. Thought I clicked the wrong link, man. Black yeah. casting couch <laughs> definitely has some choking maneuvers going on. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> it's choking posters and one diagram of a human arm. That's what yeah. we're getting right now. <laughs> okay. But to be clear, in the movie, this human trafficking, modeling, organ harvesting team from vaguely somewhere in the Middle East has rented like a slot in a WeWork building. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's what yeah. we're looking at. Yes. It's so weird. Yeah. And they're make they're basically making their organ selling catalog by photographing the girls and then they'll send it back so that people can be like, oh, I want her kidney. I would really like her kidney and this one's liver. Is there any way that we can maybe mix them up a little? Right. That's, exactly. That's what yeah. I think they're doing. 100%. Yeah. yeah. And there's one girl, you know, you mentioned the girl's outfits, but there is one girl who is sitting down uncomfortably close to the other girl next to the green screen. Like they so don't close. have a waiting room somewhere. <laughs> They, don't, like, they didn't. She's going to be taking photos. Don't worry. We'll crop you out of the shot. But you're literally, you basically got to fucking swipe your nose through her ass like a credit card because right. she's going to be that fucking close to you. Everybody is in like a chiropractor chair. Everyone's doing an entire movie in a single chiropractor chair is what's happening. <laughs> So this is where, now we cut back to the kitchen yeah. with Karen, I believe the name was, and yeah. our protagonist. Yeah, she just ripped out a deuce. She's letting it air out a little. <laughs> she she's coming back. Ripped a deuce. Yeah. Oh, Catherine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Catherine. Yeah. Catherine, yes, thank you, Catherine. Catherine. And she's going to get around to her point, which is that she would like him to help protect a famous Bollywood actress. There's $7,000 cash in it for you if you say yes. And I don't know why. I don't know why, because $7,000 is a big amount of money. But the idea that the like the beat drop moment of this scene is like, it's $7,000 depressed me so much. <laughs> <laughs> I like, became so deeply spiritually sad that Vitali Versace sat in front of his like 2011 MacBook Pro and was like, okay, but it's got to be a lot of money. <laughs> Seven thousand dollars oh yeah baby <laughs> i want to i want to mention too this is this is the food safety guy in me at a certain point they're still sitting in the in the room with all the food and he asks Catherine if it would be okay if he makes his daughter a sandwich he's like can i make my daughter weird a sandwich question. with weird the leftovers that he asks her that. she's yeah. like yeah weird fine it's not her house it's grandpa's house they established that it's grandpa's house his dad's house who lost his arm, Jeff the Drunk. It's Jeff the Drunk's house. It's yeah. Jeff the Drunk's house. That's why he's in the background. <laughs> and so, that's why he's there the whole time and sometimes teleports out of the chair. So he somehow <laughs> asks her if he can make his daughter a sandwich. And then he makes the saddest sandwich it's you've ever rough. seen. It's terribly it's overcooked scrambled eggs on fucking untoasted bread, nothing else in it. And then he sets it on the counter and she's like, oh, is your daughter coming by to eat the sandwich? She's like, no, it's for tomorrow. And I was like, you're just going to let it sit out on the counter? Like, yep. no wonder your A wife has custody. You will try to poison your daughter. Yeah. What the fuck, man? It's like a raw sandwich. It was the grossest thing so in the world. So weird. Nasty. It's rough. It looked like some of the photos from Firefest, right? Yeah. That they used in the lawsuit. That's what the yes. sandwich looks like. Yeah. Yeah. Except, we, yeah, minus the styrofoam packaging, it exactly <laughs> looked like that. Yeah. Right. But he says yes to the bodyguard thing. And that means that. Well, at first he says no. He's like, no, I'm retired. I'm not getting back into that game. I don't kill people anymore. And she's like, it's yeah. tomorrow. It's $7,000. You have a podcast. You're wearing sweatpants. And he's like, I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the end of the scene. 
Yeah, and that's the end of the scene. So we're back with another title card. This one, again... Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. There is a piece of that scene. So Jeff the Drunk is in the back the whole time, right? Jeff the Drunk, Jeff the Drunk, Jeff the Drunk. Obviously, Then yes. she walks outside to go away. They have that conversation that you just said where she tries to convince him to go on that little be a protector or a security guard for a day, right? So she has that conversation with him. The sun sets during that conversation because they have, they have no lights and it's literally dark when they finish that conversation. Correct, yep. And then she walks by Jeff the drunk who says, you come back to take care of my son, but if he isn't here... I'll take care of you. That is literally what he says. Yes. And I was like, what the fuck, Grandpa? What is happening right now? And also he teleported like fucking Scorpion out there yeah. to do it. <laughs> he, did, he did teleport like Scorpion <laughs> out into here. the deck. <laughs> and no one will acknowledge. I checked. I rewatched this movie just to check. No one will acknowledge Jeff the Drunk's existence for the rest of the film. <laughs> No, <laughs> there's a solid theory that he is the ghost of a dead person for the rest of this movie. It's a lot like Fight Club, actually. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, yeah. So with that scene out of the way, now we're back to yet another title card. This one, again, says two weeks from now. From now. <laughs> from now. Yeah. So are we back to the present now? <laughs> or are we from the now, two weeks from the now, starting when we just were watching? Yeah. Um, maybe the same people were doing the exact, same thing two weeks ago and now we're watching them do that same thing now to now to now mm -hmm. <laughs> it's gone up i'm so confused right now. it's deeply confusing yeah. i don't know what's happening we get a shot of the model girls they're being drugged this time hey podcast listener is it is it Catherine who's in the scene right now Catherine is one of the girls yes. being drugged right now yes she that's is. what i thought okay yes yes okay no i just want to double check Okay, all right, I'm there. And, he, and the guy like weakly tries to put tape on her and she turns her face and then it sticks to her cheek. Okay. And it's fucking amazing. But, but then... <laughs> but then... And he has no shirt on? He has no... Okay, yes, shirtless henchman is insane. He, he will not put a shirt on for the entire movie except for one second at the end, which then I got mad about because I was like, no, commit to the bit, you're a shirtless henchman guy. Exactly, yes. yeah. But when he puts the tape over her mouth, the tape... <laughs> It's out of stick, this piece of prop yeah, tape. It's uh -huh. tiny. From like yeah. too many takes, clearly. <laughs> too many and he has takes. to just hold it in place over the mouth for a second. I, you cannot picture how small... It, duct tape rolls do not come in small enough squares. He had to cut a piece yeah. of duct tape in like half and then in half yeah. again. And Jeff the drunk, whose roll of duct tape it was, was like, don't use so much fucking <laughs> duct tape. You drank all my apple juice earlier. Drank, Fuck this. You drank my apple juice and now... He's trying to shut her mouth with like a breathe right nose strip. It's like <laughs> yes, that small. exactly. Yeah. It's one of those mint strips, Listerine yeah. mint strips that she's using in his duct tape. <laughs> also, we should point out what this is trying to do. Well, first, so much. Okay. There's first so of all, much, shirtless henchmen. So much about this guy. Shirtless henchmen. You know how we've been like, hey, this guy has a shirt and this guy has like a tablecloth. This guy literally has a <laughs> towel around his head. Yikes. Not in a turban, <laughs> not in anything resembling a turban Yikes. or any kind of headdress. No, just like no, he looks like he just he got out of the shower. Yeah. He got out of the shower. Yeah. yeah. But he, he he has pretty much no hair either. So no it's hair, nonsense. but yeah, it still has it on Just head. straight racism. But no. <laughs> <laughs> this is 100% racism. Yeah. Yes, 100%. And now what this shot is, hey, podcast listener, have you seen Taken? Yeah, well, in Taken, they have the girls chained to beds and they have them on a heroin. And like we said, Vitaly Versace saw someone else watching the trailer for this movie. A couple rose back on a plane and he was like, got it. But because all they had to work with was the stuff in this career nursing office, <laughs> they have attached all these girls to IV. IV machines. Not heroin. IV bags. Yeah, they're IVs because that's what they practice on. Can you put heroin into an IV and do a I slow mean, I drip? guess you could. I mean, it's a lot of heroin. <laughs> slow drip. Yeah. Maybe. It's a very different effect than we see in Taken. Yeah. Okay. I'll take a whole IV of heroin, please. Can you put that in a briefcase <laughs> for later? <laughs> okay. Question. I have not seen Taken or any of... Uh, there's more oh, than one, right? Oh, it's so good. It's so good. good. Is this it's movie, a terrible movie, but it's so good. Has it been ruined for me now? Because I know what's going to happen. No, no. it's... it's it, Taken is so much... It's such a... It's such a, like, exactly what you expect of it. And Liam Neeson is exactly what you expect. So it's so much fun 
for that reason, but it's a genuinely terrible movie. Like, it's genuinely bad. Okay. You should see it, man. I'm very excited for you to see Taken now, Heath, because if you see Taken soon, and you should, like, go try and see it in the next, like, 48 hours, because you will now recognize the yeah, moments the that it moments. stole for this yes. movie. There's a lot of okay. And appreciate it. To be like, oh, I get it. Was That's how it this is their version of the movie. It's good. You're seeing, you're having the reverse <laughs> experience that yeah. Cecil and I had. You should yeah. do it. Okay. Yeah. So like the opposite of an homage to Vitaly Versace is the yes. experience I'm going to get. A okay. demage, if you will. Got it. It's like, it's like watching a, the difference between like a musical at a, like a fourth grade recital and a musical on say Broadway. It'd be like the exact same difference. <laughs> Right. But you watched the music. You've never seen Wicked. You just saw a fourth grade class do it. Exactly. And now you're going to go see Wicked. And now Adina Menzel's doing it. Right. Okay. Yeah. And now and now you go see it on Broadway. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. And you're going to be like, whoa, those kids suck. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so speaking of ripping off Taken, now we have the scene where he is escorting the Bollywood actress. Mm -hmm. She's practicing her lines in Spanish. In a bikini. She is not a Bollywood actress. In a bikini. Nope. You know, she's she's practicing her Spanish. Speaking in English and Spanish. In Spanish lines, the Bollywood actress. Yeah, that famous. Dolly's got some problematic ideas about race and he really lets her sure die in this particular <laughs> film. He also seems to be confused about what the uh, earpiece thing that spies have. <laughs> oh my you God, know, the, like, so the little curly it's Q like iPhone. Secret Service thing. It's He's He just has that in his head. He's like, spies have that. Spies have so it. So in this scene, Jack has that and he's talking to fucking nobody into that earpiece because we watched the rest of the scene. There's nobody else on the spy team. No. Except the person standing next to him at the time. Yeah, Catherine. Yeah, who has, it was also has, and she's literally standing right next They're to standing him. next to each other on earpiece. It's like a naked gun movie. Yeah. It's like a naked gun <laughs> bit. They are yes. At one point, they are talking into their earpieces. He is walking the actress downstairs and Catherine is standing there and they're both talking into earpieces. I'm not kidding you, a <laughs> foot from each other. They would have worked better if it was two soup cans and a piece of string. <laughs> Truly, yeah. And, and with, with less distance, yeah. So now we're backstage with the Bollywood actress. And again, for some reason, Jeff the Drunk is backstage singing her a song. Yeah, there's this, it's a specific country song. I found it because I looked for the lyrics that he was singing. So he's, he, there's an actual <laughs> song a country song I linked in the notes, but yeah, it's a, I didn't know it. I was like, I, I'd never heard it. They're going to put me in movies. And I was like, oh, and then I, cause I was like, that, why would he say that? And then, so I just typed the, in, in the Google and it brought up the song. Okay. So to be clear, Jack takes his dad on spy missions. <laughs> <laughs> on Apparently. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Okay. I'll take the mission, but only if my handicapped father can just sort of hang out backstage doing whatever he wants. And they were like, yep, no problem. Yep, 100%. Also, this is where the VO comes in and tells us that Pops lost his arm in Vietnam. Yeah. And I'm looking at his arm. <laughs> it definitely as, still has an arm. Looking at his arm, it's insane. Still has an arm. He also says, this is one of my favorite best, worst, like English moments. He says, he got the gold medal for his bravery. <laughs> <laughs> After Grandpa stops singing too, the lady turns around who's the Bollywood actress supposed to be the famous Bollywood. She just turns around and thanks him for singing. I don't know if you remember. She just like turns like, yep. thanks so much. And he's like, cool, no problem. Sing for you tomorrow. <laughs> so nice. Just like out of nowhere. Let me know if you want another one. Take your dad to work day. That's great. I love his singing. Yeah, no, it's great. This is really normal. I'll placate thing. this weirdo behind me for a moment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And now, oh, and the hairdresser in this scene with the midriff that is oh, doing yeah. her hair has like a, you know how when, when criminals are in movies and they tuck a gun in their belt, mm -hmm. this guy has stuck an entire hair dryer. An in entire his, hair dryer in his belt like a gun. His belt like a yeah. gun. <laughs> the only way it could be sillier is if it was on and blowing out his pants like parachute pants. You want it, yeah, you want it to go off by accident. Yeah. He's just yeah. like, ow, motherfucker. Just cut. Pulls out a hair dryer. It smells like his balls. <laughs> Shoots off his dick like a fucking uh, proud boy. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow it shoots his eye out. Yeah. And again, just like Taken, he uh, he says, hey, my daughter wants to be an actress. Although the, Vitaly couldn't understand the trailer. The daughter wants to be a singer in yeah, the movie. Yeah, singer in the thing. Yeah, it's a little different. But but in, in Taken, or in this movie, he wants to be an actress. And she says, tell her to get a job at Mickey D's. <laughs> 
Okay, but that's just, you know, to give us an arc for this character named Rihanna. Right, uh, literally, <laughs> yes. And also to rip off exactly <laughs> the Taken movie. I mean, she wants a lower stake job, just become a podcaster. I mean, yeah, exactly. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> so now we cut over to the daughter and her friends. She's getting a, a call on her cell phone, and apparently yeah. her cell phone ring is set to an office phone from 1997. <laughs> it's a weird, no, it it's a weird like for that. a ringtone. Yeah, no, it's a free ringtone from Pixabay. I found it. This is also where he tells her that the famous Bollywood actress he's protecting is named Rihanna. <laughs> <laughs> I love just, just picturing Vitaly Versace trying to make up names and he just keeps hitting <laughs> famous names and he can't get away from it no matter mm -hmm. what he does. Her name's <laughs> Rihanna DiCaprio. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then he's like rapid fire, like on, his, on, the on the phone with his daughter. He's like rapid fire telling her all these like factoids of what's going on in her life. And then in the middle of all that, she's like, from Bollywood? Like, like since <laughs> she's not even responding to what he's saying at all. She's just, he just, he's talking. And then she had to have a line there. And it was just like from Bollywood. And then he hangs up the phone on her. Yeah. And so now we're going to re recreate the protection scene from Taken. Yes. Vitaly Versace. Finally makes it into the movie. See, so this was the star of the first movie. Okay. So and the guy who you're hearing doing the voiceover, he is playing the... He's the creep? Yeah, he's the creep. Oh. Now, I should point out that this movie is very conflicted because in Taken, it's like a stalker who's attacking her. And so they want to steal that. But that would be a scene where they weren't racist against Muslim people. So... They Can't do the scene where he's like a creepy stalker who reaches out to choke her and they just like shove him aside and get her away. But then as they're riding away in the car, Catherine is like, yeah, that was from the Islamic State. They're doing it about the war in Kashmir. <laughs> Kashmir! <laughs> the, the really big fan who tried to like get an autograph too hard was a terrorist attack by ISIS. That's what yeah. they're A very specific yeah. terrorist attack, apparently. We also learned that Catherine can teleport here because she puts a knee in this guy's back as they run her to like, like they're, she's being shot at. They basically push her head down and run her to the, to the SUV, right. throw her in, and then they take off. And as they drive away, he's like, don't worry, I'll let him, I won't let him get you. And then they cut back and Catherine's in the car. Just in the car. <laughs> just like in the car. She just teleports. because <laughs> yeah, like, She just teleported the boys into the car. Like the Matrix 2 thing. Yeah. yeah. Exactly, yeah. So sometime later... Maybe. <laughs> My job We're is hard this week. Sometime from now, amount. Yeah. yeah. In in a later time dimension than the scene we just watched, Bollywood Rihanna is decorating a Christmas tree and he has a $7,000 in an envelope with a heart on it. That says $7,000 on it. <laughs> We don't see any money. I wrote my notes. Normalize paying your bodyguard in Valentine's Day stationery, people. <laughs> she like puts his name and then puts a heart instead of the a dot for the eye just right over the top of it. It's very cute. <laughs> Miss Rihanna is, dedicate, is, is, is working on a Christmas tree though. Very skinny Christmas tree. This felt like a 70s tie yeah. version of a Christmas tree. Not a really like a nice Christmas tree. This is like one that you sort of pay for at like... You know, when Spirit Halloween is closing up for the season, you know, right, it's like one exactly. of those, like a clearance Christmas tree. It's broken Spirit of Halloween yeah. is where they got this one. Yeah. <laughs> but they, again, they're trying to reenact the scene from Taken where the actress is like, hey, here's my agent's card. If your daughter really wants to learn to sing, this is where she can do it. Except yeah. they're just like doing this while they're talking about acting. Yeah. Right. She's saying, look, the thing your daughter needs to know about acting is it's all smoke and mirrors. They say, and there's a real quote, they say action when there is no action. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, Eli, you've you've done a little bit of acting, right? A little bit here and there. Sure. Yeah. Do they do pump fakes and say action yeah. and then just trick you and you start <laughs> acting and they're like, ah, idiot. No, uh, that wasn't, that wasn't stupid. really stupid. I said okay. psych after I said action. Here's what I think actually happened. And this is this is a deep lore cut. This is what I think happened. I think Voltali Versace at one point was an extra on a movie or a TV show, right? And he was watching people do it and the actor said action and someone like picked up a glass and put it down and he loudly said, what are you talking about? You did nothing. Come on, let's make a movie, people. <laughs> Have you all seen Taken? And then he was escorted out of the building, maybe in cuffs. And he was, this is him having his revenge with that line. <laughs> <laughs> that all tracks. That's my theory. What does he say? He says like, there's no action. It's smoke and mirrors. And then 
you pretend to fall in love with someone from someone who wrote a script and you don't even know who they are or something yep. like that. Like, what the fuck are you talking about? I think what happened is, is that they said, just fucking improv something. We don't have anything written down. Just pretend you're giving her this thing and we'll just, this is all going to be B-roll anyway. We're not going to actually shoot it. And then they accidentally just like hand it to the editor and he's like, no, this is fucking gold. She crushed what acting this is. This is as good as anything else Vitaly shot we're keeping. This it. is perfect. Yeah. This is what acting is. <laughs> or Vitaly Versace has spent like more than a decade in this business being genuinely angry that acting is technically lying. Like, <laughs> yeah. like he really is mad about that. That's the other possibility. It's a possibility. I don't think that's out of the question. Yeah. So he takes the agent's card. And so now we're going to cut to him at brunch where his daughter is showing him her new headshot, mm -hmm. which is very clearly this actress's headshot, including her real name on the bottom. I really appreciated that. <laughs> Maybe we could get her for the, I don't know, podcast, movie? We make a movie? Well, I'll tell you, if Not anything has made me confident to make a movie, it is the fact that this movie got made. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, man, all you need is an iPhone 6S Plus and you can okay. make any movie you want. So they're sitting there. They're talking about her career as an actor. And now we have the most important moment of the film. I'm talking, of course, about his water order. <laughs> okay. <laughs> There's no way this isn't real. This, this is insane. This is Eli Bosnick. Yeah. Okay. This is 100% real. It's funnier than anything I've <laughs> ever written. <laughs> he asks for three glasses of water, two with ice, and one warm. Not hot. Do you mean hot? No. Warm. <laughs> Not hot. That's the actual order. <laughs> I was so fucking angry. The waiter comes over. <laughs> so the waiter, by the way, is the same guy who plays the like, in quotes, Muslim kidnapper. The guy who looks like the Russian chef, but is actually supposed to be one of the kidnappers. Right. That's the same guy, right? Yeah. Waiter at panicking or whatever. Okay, yeah. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. He, is, he is one of the five cast members of this film. Yes, correct. Okay, so this wasn't like it was part of the operation of the kidnappers. It was just like they have five guys and they had to have a waiter be one of them. No, yeah, no, it's important yeah. to never try to connect the characters between scenes. That's the That way lies madness. <laughs> okay. Yeah. He comes over and asks them for the order and the order is two cold waters and one warm water, not hot, warm. And I was just like, get the fuck out. If, <laughs> If this waiter doesn't just like violently escort them out of this restaurant, I will be angry. Yeah, they didn't order food. They just ordered water. Warm water. Warm water. Two cold and one warm water, yeah, please. And here's cups. the thing. Yeah. And the waiter goes and gets it in yeah. coffee cups. To, to, like, go, to go coffee, coffee, coffee cups. cups. To he go coffee cups. Yeah. Different temperatured waters. <laughs> yeah. So to be clear, they agreed to use this coffee shop. The coffee shop was like, yeah, you can use our outside booth if you use our branded coffee shops. And at one point, for no reason, the actor literally points to his shirt and goes, welcome to Pepica's, the coffee shop on 43rd of Maine. You can come here. The coffee is very good. <laughs> I looked this because they, they're they're also trying to tell us the entire time here that they're in Paris. So they are in Paris with people who are native English speakers from America asking if they would like water. But even more importantly, a company called Panikin who is had them basically do a long, like longing shot over the bar in Panikin. It took 10 seconds of Googling to find they only have three locations and all three are in San Diego. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, this was supposed to be in Paris? It's supposed to be in Paris. Yeah, yeah they're, no, they're they spend the a lot of time. They spend a lot of time trying to establish that. It's supposed to all be in Paris. Let me clarify Again, Heath, you haven't seen Taken, so the daughter goes to Paris. To Paris. In Taken, and that's where she gets kidnapped. Oh, so okay. you have to like watch Taken as like a prereq to watch this? <laughs> well, no. you, you had to watch the trailer for Taken to make this movie. Got so, <laughs> But they will, they will several times in the movie just announce apropos of nothing. We are in Paris. Yeah, with the palm trees. Yeah. But Vitaly <laughs> was like, Okay, but like, there's no way anyone would get kidnapped in Paris because all the real sleaze baggos I've met are in Los Angeles. <laughs> like that guy who Flip would not locations. buy that watch for my dad. Flip locations. It's genius. Way to go. Yeah. <laughs> so in this movie, they live in Paris and all speak English and everyone they know speaks English. And she's going to LA where she'll be kidnapped. Yeah. Got it. I'm all caught up. Right. On the movie I watched. And at this point, the waiter comes back. By the way, I do want to point out, Heath, this guy... Definitely took your cue. He came back. 
it's hot water because that's what he says. Yep. He doesn't say it's warm water. It's like, here's your <laughs> hot water, sir. And he walks away. And he walks Guess away. Guess what you have to do? Wait, motherfucker. And then he walks away from him. So it, it get a little bit of revenge there. Yeah. Side note, this is the extent to which they don't acknowledge Jeff the Drunk in this movie. Jeff the Drunk is in this scene. He does not get a water. <laughs> he doesn't even get a water. Nope. That's the extent to which he has stopped being acknowledged <laughs> in this movie at this point. Yeah, no, he's definitely not in the movie. Well, he's in the movie, but he's not right. really a, he's not part of the movie. But this is where the daughter tells him she's been cast in a movie in LA <laughs> fucking best and she wants happened. him to sign the permission slip to be in the movie. It's a sci-fi movie. What's um called? What's the name of the <laughs> production company? What's the name of the production company that's yeah. doing that movie? Eli? Yeah, oh, what is the? I, I didn't catch the production. I know Black the casting movie. couch. No, that's the movie name, Cecil. That's the <laughs> no, goddamn that's the production movie name. company. It's a production company. I don't know what is the. the you think the movie's name? You think the name of the movie is Black Casting Couch? Yes, that's what the daughter says. She says <laughs> in the movie is a sci-fi movie called Black Casting Couch. It's what sci-fi about it? Is it sci-fi? Because how bad they're going to stretch her asshole? Yeah, like, is exactly. That what's yes. Sci-fi? They're going to go see her like a chicken. <laughs> yes. For sure. And look, here's the thing. Voltali Versace is trying to make a porn joke here, but it's the darkest insight into his porn habits True. I've ever seen. Like, you ever met a couple who are weird and kinky and they accidentally give it away once and you have to like never talk to them again, right? Like, he'll just be like, well, I know someone else who likes being spanked and they like titter and you're like, we're never playing cards ever again. Just, you know, this is the last time you're ever going to see my fucking face. That's what this line in this script does is Vitaly Versace finished masturbating to the website of black casting couch porn that he pays for, like Heath typing Y into his search bar. And, I don't pay for that. And he fucking it goes to YouTube, and you can do. You, there's lots of stuff. There's art on YouTube. You don't know <laughs> what I was going to see. And he it's not fucking, racially charged necessarily. That's that's right, weird. I, I don't know why I said that. Right there, yeah. yeah. He says, "What kind of movie is Black Casting Couch?" And everyone else in the scene is like, "Come on, man. You know, just <laughs> <laughs> say the words, Black Casting Couch." This is fucking. It's so amazing. I literally laughed out loud when that happened. I was like, are you kidding me right now? I, and again, I, so I don't know. Every time we watch these, right? Like, so that Neil Breen movie we did and this movie, like there's a big part of me that thinks this guy is just kidding. Nope. Like this guy is an, a massive troll and he's just kidding. There's no way you put that in there without being like, no, this is, this is, there's no way anybody would think that that's the <laughs> thing that you would put in the movie <laughs> and not try to be funny. Eli, come on, man. A hundred, I promise you. First I of all, I promise you no. Vitaly no, Versace's this guy already and Neil are having lunch right now laughing at you. <laughs> no, they're not. They're both having lunch by themselves thinking I'm a genius, I'm a genius, I'm a genius, I'm a genius. Yes. We need to get both of them together for this movie we're making. Yes. <laughs> I'm checking Cameo right now for both of them. What does she need a permission slip for? Can we... She's 18. Okay. So again, it's stolen from Taken, right? In Taken, it was a school trip to Paris. Okay. But he was just like, they did it in Taken, they did. So apparently <laughs> she needs a parental permission slip to be in Black Casting Couch, yeah. the movie. Okay. Yeah, no. Sure. But anyways, the mother and the daughter, they're very upset that he's not going to sign the permission slip because he doesn't trust Los Angeles and he <laughs> wants to go with her and she says no. So they storm off. Well, when, when the daughter storms off, though, it is the best storming off I've ever seen in any movie because she can't just get up and leave because mom is taking up the space of the aisle where she could leave. So she has to <laughs> stand on a bench behind mom and step down and walk away because there's literally not enough room between mom and the table to get by. Correct. So she has to jump on top, basically like, like jump on top of a table, like do a box jump onto a bench and then jump <laughs> off. Yeah. And then walk away. And then the mom who wants to storm off starts storming off in the wrong direction and yep. then has to about face. Yeah. I am storming off. Nope. I'm, I'm back this other way, actually. <laughs> well, act, no. Can you squench over? Just squench Seems over. Over I'm here, off. lady. Shut up. Over here. She might as well have to zip line out of the scene. That's how <laughs> silly it is. <laughs> One other thing, as they're leaving him, they leave him there with his hot water and also a very obvious copy of the script right in front of him. 
<laughs> and then Gramps, Gramps, Gramps pressures him to sign the thing so she can do black casting. Couch. Yeah, he says. Like he Gramps says, is like, no, he... she should absolutely do black casting couch. hundred percent. Better than this movie. <laughs> <laughs> so now we're going to cut back over to shirtless guy with a towel on his head. Jesus Christ. Now this is getting weirder. Again, he's got someone hooked up to an IV because... This is vaguely what the director remembers happening and taken. I, I just have to point out that in this particular scene where they're all hooked up to IVs, the room is full of CPR dolls. <laughs> Little CPR babies. <laughs> like a dozen CPR. So it's three they're girls who are supposed to be on heroin. And like, I'm not kidding, two dozen CPR dolls. Yeah. And they're all small. Now, these are not full size dolls. These are not dolls that you would practice on a, on a, like a normal sized adult human. These are baby CPR dolls. So they're toddler and infant sized. So even fucking creepier. <laughs> yeah. So weird. Why wouldn't they just move those out of the shot for this one shot? Oh, no. No idea. I don't understand. The guy slowly moves them in the shot. He is later on, he's going to be picking them up one by one. He does. Yeah. He's like checking them. He's like, mm, yes, good table. CPR. They said like four minutes left at the WeWork. Yeah. Slot they had. And they were like, oh, get it, get it, get it, get it. We got to get the shot. Moving from one table to the other. I, uh, Heath, I got to ask you a question. Sure. What is it, this guy is, is in this scene. Do they, is this the part where they show his, his, his towel and what it's connected to. Is this the scene where we get a chance to see how his towel is attached okay. to his head? I'm pretty sure, yes. This is where he has very clearly the chip clip thing. To like the chip hold clip. It. Yep. To hold, he has a chip clip hold holding his towel closed. on his head. Chip or your clip. cereal bag inside the box closed. Keep it all fresh. <laughs> they got one of those, and that's how they put a literal, just plain towel wrap around this guy's head. And they were like, that's a turban, right? Yep. <laughs> Turban set. <laughs> Decorative chip clip. Mwah. Chef's kiss. It's perfect. What do Arab people look like? Black, <laughs> right? Same? Yeah, got it. Black, no shirt, towel, Yikes. chip clip. Nailed it. Yikes. Holy Christ. This is also one of the girls, it doesn't matter which, don't worry about it, tries to escape in this scene. And they just sort of have her run around the office building that this fucking travel agency is in. <laughs> and just imagine how terrible it must have been to be one of the other soulless, nameless businesses when some Russian girl in a tube top comes running around a corner, right? And Vitaly <laughs> Versace is filming her with an iPhone 6. Yeah. That'll make you buy a storefront. That's yeah. how you move to Jersey, right? They're like, nope, nope. Okay. It's pretty funny if Eli is at one of these WeWorks doing this podcast when that happens and he's like, holy yeah. shit, I'm in. Oh my God, look at that. My, They're right there. My lives just it's crazy. Kind of circled around into each other. It is, it's all big stuff. <laughs> they really did mean two weeks from now. Tom's okay. broken the door outside. <laughs> he's pulled the door off its hinges. Tom is walking inside with the door behind him. Yeah, I didn't want to name names, but Cecil and Tom used to have a studio in a really not nice area of town and they definitely <laughs> shot this movie in that same <laughs> building. That building is 100% correct. Right down the street. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I love that. So this one woman tries to escape her kidnappers. She walks around this WeWork for a second. She can't find a way out. And then one of the bad guys just like walks in her and, <laughs> and like walks her, like scolds her, walks her back into like yeah. their area. Back in. And then he looks, he goes over to shirtless henchmen and other henchmen. And he's like, hey, idiots, be careful because, you know, we're terrorist kidnapper or <laughs> harvester heroin salesman. And you really have to watch to make sure because we don't really have any security. <laughs> we're just in a WeWork and like she stumbled into yeah. this podcaster who was Guys. talking about her and they started talking. <laughs> we almost got caught. Yeah. And then the guy, the shirtless guy with the chip clip, he doesn't have a turban on now. He's just got his bald head out and he stares at the camera for like 45 straight seconds. Yep. And there's nothing that happens. <laughs> it's nothing. just his, it's just his, his eyes. Like it's like that person who could pop their eyes out of their head. Yep. You know, that one person, it looks like that. And you're like, what is happening? And then you wait and it still happened. And it happens for 45 straight seconds. No one says a thing. It's crazy. Yeah. And then the scene is over. Yep. Yeah, no, you're just staring at this guy. Be like, no, you have to go now. I said something. <laughs> uh, you it's have to turn. You have, it's your you're turn. It. This is crazy. Yeah. It's like having to do a business meeting with Heath. Just yeah. Like <laughs> with, with Eli? Yeah. <laughs> For so long. So long. I love that you guys do this on air. All right. Well, looks like we're going to need to have an HR meeting uh, at our <laughs> podcasting firm. And also they probably need one at the modeling heroin <laughs> organ harvesting firm. We're going to give everybody a minute. 
I'm going to give everybody a minute. <laughs> but first, let me give Act 3 the hard sell. Will Jack use his amazing spy karate to save the day? Will the black casting couch be depicted with racial sensitivity and professionalism <laughs> by the film? I hope so. Will the movie do the movie? Find out that you guessed right on all of those questions when we return for the so-called conclusion of Born Into Mafia 2. Tom, for the last time, doors are push and pull. There's no through. All right, I'm in the building elevator now. I'll be up in a second. Hey, hey, it's Cecil, right? Uh, it's Cecil. Chegrel. Cecil? Rekiel. Worse. Anyway, hey, man, you're a Picasso, right? Yeah, yeah, we have a show. It's called... Well, looks like I'm about to send Mr. Christ another Zangu card because you should totally be in the movie I'm making in my sister's nursing career office. Uh, um, no thanks, no. Ho, ho, hold your reply, Harriet the Spy. What if I told you that we're using only the hottest girls from my brother's methadone clinic? Yeah, definitely no. Okay, man, you're lost, Crystal. Yeah, no, I totally appreciate the offer, but no. Hey, are you with that guy who always keeps breaking the door, Jess? Yeah, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry about that, but yeah. No problem. Sometimes in my country, a door is just a fence. Yeah, sounds bad, man. It is, Grisel. It's Cecil. Sacral. Cecil. Green Crunch. Yeah, you got it. And we're back. And now we're over at Pops' house, and everyone's chilling on his lovely above garage <laughs> porch that he has. Oh, God. Playing little cards, doing a little sun tanning. Hey, but I have a balcony at my place if you want to check it out. It's a pretty sweet view of my yard. Street. <laughs> yeah. Street outside. For sure. You could sit on my sex swing and just swing back and forth if you want. No problems. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It's just two old guys playing cards right next to these two young women on, yeah, basically a sex swing for like... <laughs> Ogling. It's an ogling swing that they have yeah, right yeah. there. Somehow for like people who want to watch and also want to use a sex swing is the, is the goal here. <laughs> but yeah, he agrees to sign the release. Yeah. He goes to tell the mom, this is what I call the food off. This is Yikes. where she eats a banana an inch from his face and he is eating <laughs> tomato sauce out of a bowl. Is that what's happening it's here? Just, it's like random to me. He like opened a bottle of Prego and just poured a little Right, just poured there. himself a little sippy sip. Yeah. Hey, Vitali, name two foods that we could have two of the characters eating really quick. Just to top of your head, what, you got any uh, foods? I mean, need? probably the best lunch combination, tomato uh -huh. sauce and a banana. <laughs> All right, there we go. That'll This is life. That'll do it. Yeah. <laughs> Remember, we can't eat a banana as a boy because that's how they turn you gay from the government. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, small thing. This movie's just horrible for so many so reasons, good. but small thing. This, they actually have two camera people at least. Well, I know that because I saw the other guy all yes. the way in, <laughs> in the shot, just in the shot. right there. The 100% percent in the shot. They never use that perspective by the way no because that'd be breaking the 180 degree rule well because they, they they got that such a perfect you know they got it yeah. in one it would be breaking the 180 degree rule it would to completely disorient the audience so obviously yeah. not to use it like both of this guy's hands and the entire iphone 6s plus that he's using and the little like yeah plastic thingy that holds that when, you, when you're using it as a camera so silly. And the crane he's standing on and like right, the entire... Yeah, yeah. Everything. It yeah, felt everything. like yeah. a, an accidental version of... You remember in like Arrested Development where they would like pan up and you'd see like the boom mic there and very clearly like show the people. It was that, but like <laughs> they didn't do it on purpose at all. They just no, fucked it up. No, Yeah. So meanwhile, back at the modeling agency, the girls are posing some more. I only cut to this again. I know nothing new happens, but this is where the girl does the flamingo pose. She does. She yeah. does like the hamstring stretch. Yeah. It's yeah. the funniest thing anyone's ever done. They obviously ran out of poses. It's the best. <laughs> it's generous. So now it's time for him to drive the girls to the airport where they talk to him about how cool he is. <laughs> Your dad is so hot. <laughs> Yes. Oh, so weird. Yeah. He insisted, this actor insisted on <laughs> the daughter's friend being like, hey, I'm going to try to fuck your dad. And <laughs> being like, no. Multiple times throughout the movie. Don't do that. Yeah. They had to mention it like out loud. And then it, at the same time, like she's trying to explain like, 
at one point she says, yeah, my dad totally saved the world once. It was, it was kind of cool. It was all right. <laughs> yeah, fine. whatever. It's not it's a big cool. deal. Yeah. Your, wait, your dad who chops wood uh, shirtless on the side of the road and it's really sexy, that guy? That guy? Yeah. That guy, that's the one, yeah. <laughs> He's also just like spilling national intel. He's like, yeah, no, so there was like these Russians trying to sell nukes to the Al-Qaeda and I stopped them by, uh, well... I can't tell you what I did, but let's just say I made a lot of people who are dead now. <laughs> and she's like, what does that mean? And he's like, the weather's great, isn't it? Would you girls <laughs> like a cup of warm water? And then they pull over the you side guys, of the I road. have a really good warm water spot. It's called Pachika's <laughs> Coffee Shop. If you guys want to check it out, they let us Pachinko's, use it. there. Yeah, right down the street. Also, by the way, they're in Paris and it has U.S. plates. They're in Paris. They're oh, in US still plates, in yeah. Paris, according to the movie? Still, No, he has to pick them from up from the airport from, to there, and he's taking them to the airport to go to L.A. And all three girls are in the car, and so they have their they pull they come out with their you know their little travel bags, and he picks them up in the rented Lexus with the United States plates and drives away to the Paris <laughs> airport like you do. Yeah, they're just passing the same Eiffel Tower outside over. And yeah, over. <laughs> yeah. No, it's a bunch of palm trees because they're in San Diego. Because they're in fucking San Diego. Yeah, exactly. So now we cut over. He has dropped the girls off at the airport. Now we're going to cut over to him sometime later. Don't worry. We don't get a title card telling us. Going to the mom's house to talk to her and the new husband about how he's worried that black casting couch isn't listed on IMDb. <laughs> I have to talk about this opening conversation, right? He walks over to them and the black guy who decided to use the cartoon bird voice instead of a British accent says, are you following us, Jack? Are you walking your dog? And he goes, I don't have a dog. And then he says, would you like to adopt a dog? <laughs> <laughs> and then you hear in the arms of the angels start to play in the background. Right, yeah, exactly. And they show one of those dogs who sits outside in the cold. It's like, it was really very moving, very moving <laughs> yeah. part of the movie. <laughs> Why do he says, are you following us? They're clearly in a yard. Like, yeah, they're not. It's not like they're in a park somewhere. They didn't even bother to get a bench. They're sitting in the guy's yard. Of course, he's following you. He came to your house. Yeah. Yeah. But but he's worried because black casting couch isn't listed on IMDb. Yes. I wrote in my notes. Yeah, well, this movie is, is listed on IMDb, so it's not a great <laughs> metric. Also, I feel like it would be listed on IMDb. Yeah, I think it probably would be. Yeah. He also says that it's funded by people from the Middle East and his wife very reasonably says not everyone from the Middle East is a terrorist to which the protagonist of our movie says, mm -hmm. yes, they are. <laughs> I'm an expert who disagrees with what you just said. I'm also the protagonist. <laughs> yep. Yeah, don't tell me about terrorism. And then, and then she says this, he starts to say something else and then she interrupts him to tell him you're too controlling. That's why we got divorced because of all this controlling. Yeah. And then walks and then she storms away to go eat another banana. Yeah. She storms away. Very, <laughs> she's got to cram that fucking banana in there too. But she does manage to exit the scene in the correct direction on the first try. Yeah. So she's growing. We're watching her grow as an actress. I wanted her power move food to keep getting bigger. Like now, like if it had <laughs> been like a, a whole giant baguette. rack of she ribs this like time, a, like just a zucchini. Yeah. <laughs> She's got like one of, those, leg. one of those four pound bowls of bread. She's just tearing yeah. hunks off it and shoving it in her mouth. Absolutely. Yeah. Hard eye contact. <laughs> the whole time. She's dipping it in the, in, the, in the jar of peanut butter that somebody left on the counter there. Yep. She's just jamming the whole thing in there. Can I ask you guys, this scene starts with Catherine. Is that her name? Catherine, the Spanish mm -hmm. lady. Oh, uh, so the lady from South America who's, who's Spanish as well. Evidently she's from Spain, but she's standing there. She walks up and she throws money at that guy who was the person who came over to try to attack Rihanna, attack the Bollywood girl. Very confusing. And yeah. he throw, she throws the money and she's like, you weren't very convincing or something. And then she walks away. What is that? And why is that in the movie? No <laughs> fucking clue. I have clues, no Cecil. idea. I, I was just like, None. nope. Moving on. Is that not supposed to be Catherine? That is that supposed to be the like, guy? I flushed that from the ram. I didn't even pay attention. Blocked it. That's Blocked amazing. it from my mind. Like 2020 and 2016. Was, is she part of the scam according to the movie? Yeah. So according to the movie, she paid that guy to rush the Bollywood girl for some reason to do something for some reason. I don't know why. So she's in on it. She's in on it somehow. Catherine's in with the bad guys somehow. The bad guy, the guy with the flyer who wanted the autograph really badly from earlier in the movie. Right. Well, I'm sure, I'm sure when like the action of the final sequence of the movie happens, we'll, we'll figure it out. <laughs> 
your understanding. <laughs> no, yeah, it's what, fair. What was meant now, by that. you know what, Heath? I I forgot this is only part two. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So now we're going to cut over to the girls taking photos mm-hmm. when they're approached by the guy in the she cat. Oh, the kidnapping is almost here. Okay. No. 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 I am very upset now. Why the fuck? Did they go through all the whole process with the fucking, you got to sign a release and we're talking about black casting couch and who it's funded by if they are literally just going to meet on the street randomly. Great like if question. they're just going to meet great just question. randomly, <laughs> why the fuck did we go through all this to get to this point? Because Vitali Versace was like playing Snake on his phone during the section of Taken <laughs> where those two scenes were connected. So he looked up and he was like, oh man, I missed it. I bet he just met them at the Hollywood sign where everyone goes. <laughs> Cecil, this is a great question. I completely missed it because my brain had melted at this point and I was just, I just accepted it. <laughs> I was like, yep, this is how this happens. Yep, Everything else doesn't matter. Course, that was that just makes sense. some other thing unrelated. That's fine. Yeah. That's fine with me. It's They randomly meet on the street when there was literally no reason for him to go through all that permission slip drama. So I feel I feel robbed. So this, to be clear, this is a, an organ harvesting modeling terrorism group that does like busking on the street as busking <laughs> yeah, the, no, the street where they run yeah. the sales team. He actually, he also sells comedy tickets in Times Square. I don't know if you've <laughs> He has seen. an acoustic guitar. He blows the dust off yeah. once in a while, brings that mm, out. He you hands know. you a CD and then asks you for a donation after you take it yeah. for free. Paints himself silver, pretends to be a statue. A statue, yeah, occasion. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Almost as good as organ harvesting. <laughs> Almost. So this is how bad it is. They, they, he's like, yeah, we, we, well, we'll walk you to the house or whatever. And we watch them walk in silence for a full minute. For half the move, for like 30 minutes of movie. <laughs> Genuinely a full 60 second time period. I know I've said it before. If I demonstrated that silence for you, iTunes would kick this episode from the air. <laughs> 60 seconds we just watched. And the girls are sort of half opening their mouths because they feel like they should be vamping. (laughs) But Vitaly is very clearly yelling from behind the camera, no talking. (laughs) This is for a walking montage. Hold on, though. I think the reason why there's this this like deathly silence that falls over the cast is the previous line when the guy walks up and they're like, hey, why do you have that fucking towel on your head? You crazy, right? Like, person of another country she literally says that out loud like why do you have a towel on your head exact words i mean exact words. and he's like oh i'll take it off then and they're like oh cool and then he okay. takes it off <laughs> he takes it off he's like yeah i don't know why either and we're just yeah. like what is happening in this movie <laughs> jesus insensitive fucking bitch susan jesus get fucking culture <laughs> get woke susan what the fuck finally yes <laughs> So now we cut to that night. He's calling his ex-wife to tell her he has a bad feeling still more (laughs) extra. Yeah, I found the sound effect for the phone, by the way. Yeah. I Mm -hmm. I very quickly was like, I've heard that before. I've heard that sound effect for the phone. And so I went to find it and it is the easiest thing to find. So I it. It is what happens when you Google free (laughs) phone ring. Yeah, I was like, phone rings free. And it came up. (laughs) Also, one little detail. Right before this phone call, we get, the bad guy making a, he, after he chats up the three girls as part of his busking terrorism. And he's yes, like, I got right, him. Yeah. He calls his like headquarters and he says, I, I found three girls. They're around 18 years old. No parents. Okay. Bye. And he hangs up. Like that's part of the workflow in that's there. The checking. Yeah. I know. He's All this <laughs> is just to be like, you, yeah, no, I'm, I'm working hard. I'm, you know, trying to yeah. earn my commissions here. Here's uh, my, <laughs> My progress so far today? Fuck, I got to report to my pro- my fucking project manager. I won't get credit for this. Yeah, God damn. Oh, we're in, like I got to punch in I'd and out. I'd say green, yeah. maybe yellow green leads, just so you know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we see some more of the girls posing. This is a really, really long section of posing. <laughs> and I, the only reason I bring it up is not because it's not repetitive, because Cecil, I noticed in your notes here, you actually took... um. <laughs> Dictation of the dialogue from this notes. posing scene. I took detailed notes, and it is it is this on repeat. <laughs> excellent, fantastic, very good. Yes, yeah, all right. Excellent, fantastic, very good. Yes, yeah, right. And then they said it a hundred and fifty <laughs> times in a row. Genuinely, I timed it. It is a two minute and fourteen second long sequence. <laughs> 
of him saying those exact words on repeat. I, I was like, what did I do to break my YouTube this badly that I am seeing this? Yeah, man. It's yeah. impressive. Forever. Yeah. You know when you're reading something and you kind of like your, your brain wanders off and you read the same sentence over and over? <laughs> the movie did that. The movie did it that. It happened yeah. to the movie and we got to watch it. The movie it. did that to mm -hmm. you, people. Yeah, it did it to you. Yeah. And then this is the scene. This is the scene too, where that girl is like in the apple picking dress and she is a hundred percent not getting in anything else. She is in like, like she's not going to wear, she's not doing nude legs. She's like in black, like winter stockings and mm -hmm. like an apple picking dress. And she's like, this is as undressed as I get folks. This is it. I'm not going to do anything more for a Big Mac. And I will do quad stretch or yeah. hip flexor <laughs> yep. lunge. That's all you fucking get. I wrote in my notes, this is what Tom thinks porn is. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so it's time for the big scene. It's time for the big finale, oh, technically, of the it. movie. Is it? It's time for the big kidnapping. So yeah. what better way to start a, a very serious kidnapping <laughs> scene than the sheet guy peeking around the windows like a cartoon cat about to try to eat Tweety Bird? Yeah. <laughs> okay, why is he trying to sneak into the house of these three girls? I thought, like earlier, he chatted them up on the street as part of his normal busking thing. Yeah. But then he, he invited them to go clubbing that night and they said yes. So presumably he would just be like, yeah, he would just be like, get in my car. Returning to pick them up and invited. Hey guys, we're going to stop at this uh, IV clinic really quickly. You want to come in? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Whatever. Also question about this moment. He's sneaking around the side of the house for a while. Sure. There's a phone ringing. Mm -hmm. 14 times. And we hear the noise of it the entire time. 14 times it rings. It rings 14 Four, times. He's all counted. <laughs> he's counted. 14. Yeah. 14 times. Yeah. And then it's, and it's, I just want to mention, this isn't like a landline phone. This is a cell phone. There it's is cell no phone, cell phone yeah. that rings 14 times. That doesn't exist. That's impossible, You'd right? be confused because yeah. the ring, like I said, is sounds, that of yeah. an office phone at yeah, like a prison. Like a, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> and then... We have to talk about this. So she she takes her phone out of her pocket, right? The other girls are like kind of getting kidnapped. It's hard to tell. There's no action to this. Yeah, film. she's in a closet. Yeah, she's in a closet. She takes her phone out and he says, did your iPhone 6 plus bend in your pocket? <laughs> 6S plus. <laughs> and she says, no, dad, the iPhone 6 plus doesn't bend. <laughs> and he's like, just to reiterate, you're saying the iPhone 6S plus Five ninety nine ninety nine <laughs> did not bend and rung fourteen straight times, and now we're talking on it in perfect crystal clear quality. Are you telling me your rose gold <laughs> iPhone six S plus? <laughs> yeah, they have. There are four seconds left in this film, but I don't care <laughs> how long this review takes. Do we have any fucking idea? Why they talk about the iPhone 6s's unbendability? <laughs> well, it's sh yeah, the entire movie is that. shot on an iPhone 6s Plus. We shot learned. Batman isn't driving along in the Batmobile, being like, you know, if I had a red camera right now, it would capture this in high definition, <laughs> yeah. like no one else could see. No, that's true. That's true. But that that is that is in the credits. So I guess that they just wanted to mention it. He also did thank Tim Cook in the special thanks. Did he? So maybe he was really hoping that iPhone would be like, hey, uh, hi, is this Vitaly Versace? Great. Thank you for putting your phone number in the credits again. <laughs> um, just wanted to say, we really appreciated your compliments that you worked into that movie. So we would like to give you all of our Apple money to fund your third movie. <laughs> I, if he put this together for real, Eli, and you're not, and this isn't just a prank, then yes, I believe that they, he believed that was going to happen. Yeah, no question. <laughs> also, at one point, she's like hiding, right? It's the scene from Taken where this it is 100% the, the scene from Taken, except for all the good dialogue stripped out of it, right? Yes. So the really good dialogue from the movie where he's like, I have a very special set of skills. Oh I'll find God, you. I will hunt you. Like, he has, like, Liam Neeson. In this scene, Heath, you've never seen this movie. He fucking crushes this it's scene. So it is iconic. genuinely iconic Liam, Liam Neeson. And they fucking strip every bit of that scene out it's of it. It's hilarious. Okay, well, this movie has all the same racism as Liam Neeson, as I understand it. <laughs> I mean, yes. 
Uh, and also in Taken. Is that a towel on your head? What is <laughs> happening right now? The speech that he gives when he finally gets on the phone. I want to get to a couple moments of the pandemic, but the speech he finally gives is like, you fucking piece of shit. He, uh, sorry, he actually says, I, I, I'm sorry, I improvised a less racist thing than what he says. That was way too culturally sensitive just now, what you said. Yeah. He says, look, I wrote this down. Look, I'm your worst nightmare. I'm going to get there and then I'm going to torture you, you Islamic piece of shit. <laughs> Credits. <laughs> he does say that. That's literally yeah, no. the last yeah. line of the movie. He says he's because- going to shoot him in between the fucking eyes, too. Yes, he does. he does. He does. He, 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 he <laughs> dro- drops his F bombs there. <laughs> I Just one other thing. I know we got to wrap up. But just one. Well, we have to talk about the credits. But before we talk about the credits, I just have to talk about her describing the kidnappers, which is she says <laughs> they're so- Iranian or Sicilian. And I wrote yeah. in my notes, you hear that, Cecil? Huh. You hear that? Swarthy. She knows they're I swarthy. Did. I was immediately racist. You fucking racist. <laughs> I can't believe it. I also want to say she's like when she tells her dad they're there, she says, there's these strangely guys in our house. She doesn't uh-huh. say a real word. She like makes a word up on the spot. Also, yes. Dad at this point asks, what's his name? What's the guy's name? And she's like, it's Peter. As if dad was going to like Google Peter Muslim and then figure it out. Because like on the other end, he's like, I'm figuring it out right now. <laughs> and he's yeah. typing. P- and, he, and he has like a FBI page up already. She, he already has a dossier on the guy. Also want to point out too, when they grab one of the other girls, the girl on the phone with her dad says, they're gagging up Susan. And I was like, this is a hundred percent black casting couch. Like this is a hundred percent. Yeah, no. Yeah, right out of the, yeah. You pulled right from that script. Yeah, so that's, that's the movie. It's it's much like Into the Spider Verse. It leaves us on a cliffhanger for the last seven much years. Much like it, exactly mm-hmm. like it. Yeah. And now, now let's talk about the credits. Okay. As Cecil has pointed out in his notes, the credits are ten minutes and thirty six seconds long, <laughs> aka eighteen percent of the runtime of this movie. <laughs> the credits are a decent tip for the movie. Yeah, yeah. they are. They are not a great tip, kind of a shitty tip, but like just barely a good tip for the movie. Buy yourself something nice with these jogging credits. (laughs) They are a hefty African American gentleman going for a jog. Yeah. For $8 billion. Why? Is it, can we, can we clarify? Yes. Because I know we're not supposed to connect characters, right? You, Eli, you, you warned us against this Don't earlier. make connections. You can't Don't do make it. connections. Is this Chip Clip guy? This is Chip Clip guy. Okay. It is Chip Clip guy. It's Correct. Chip Clip guy. Okay. All right. Just wanted to double check to make sure. I was pretty sure it was Chip Clip guy. But is it the same character? Like, are we following him out of work on his journey to fitness? And does he, do you think in his earbuds, he is playing Johann Sebastian Bach? Or is that just over? <laughs> that's, like, yeah, what do you think? Really... Do you think he gets pumped up <laughs> by like harpsichord? Do you think that's what's happening here? I mean, I was pumped up by it for sure. <laughs> I had it on uh, extra fast at this point on YouTube. So this is extra fun. Yeah. I also enjoyed that he went for his jog through Los Angeles in Southern California in cargo pants. Long yeah. cargo pants. Yeah. Cargo Long pants. Yeah. yeah. And like yeah. boots. So like overload training. Does he stop at a fountain to wash his face at a certain point? Does he wash his face in a fountain? He does in wash his face in a, of in a Beverly fountain, yeah. Hills. Yeah. That happens. Okay, I just want to double check. Yeah. I like that he got stopped at a light at one point and he did the jog in place. Yeah, he jog- mm-hmm. you don't want your muscles. And now, as a guy who jogs, let me tell you this. You just don't want your muscles to cramp up when you're standing there, especially when you, you, know, you got a couple extra pounds on you. You want to make sure you're doing the ballistic motion to keep those muscles but engorged with you, blood. You got those cargo pants to keep you warm, so you're probably fine. <laughs> That's true, yeah. I actually got mad at this point. I was like, why the fuck am I still watching this? It was like yes. several minutes into just him jogging. But it, you couldn't stop. It was like the ring. Yeah. It was the ring. Yeah. Because you looked at everyone else's notes and you were like, I don't know about you. I looked at Cecil's notes and I was like, okay, so it's just jogging, Eli. You can stop watching. Eli, you can stop watching. <laughs> you do not have to keep watching. But I watched all six minutes I'm of the so jogging. I'm so sure that like Iron Man was going to show up and have something interesting happen. Somebody, right. Tony Stark. Here is the most important piece of the jogging sequence is that there's no reused footage. I watched it twice to make sure 
There is no reused footage. So they didn't just play it on a loop, right? So he didn't just jog up a street, turn down by a bookstore, go by a newsstand, splash his face to the fountain, and then it's over. No, 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 no. He's in different settings the entire time. And then at a certain point, he gets in his car to drive to a new place so he could start jogging again. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Do you think this guy, this actor, is like maybe the main source of money too? At the same time, like, is he like a secret EP? Ooh, he's their funder. Maybe. Well, the credits did tell us that we could we could advertise in these movies. So, oh, <laughs> We're, worth knowing. Okay, just to reiterate one more time, Vitali, seriously, Vitali, talk to us about budget for three. Yes. We will absolutely fund your I'm third in. movie. 100% fund. You don't have to like acknowledge us or say nice things. We'll pretend we didn't do it. I do want to wear a, like a like an apple picking dress and do some poses in that. <laughs> yes, if, if but you, you do me. have to put if Cecil in it as a posing like model. That, if That's you our only me. request. Absolutely. You can take pictures of my feet. And- <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, that's locked in. Speaking of which, what happens in the rest of the movie the, the, that we're apparently funding? What Part three, what's the plot? Oh, that's easy. That they never I, I, did here. Vitaly's yeah. going to put another quarter into whatever hotel room he was staying in and watch whatever happens in Take a Night. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, and then stretch that out for the heat death of the universe. Because this exactly. is only yeah, the no, first exactly. fucking seven <laughs> minutes of Taken, man. The rest of Taken is like a whole movie where he's killing people. None of that happens in this. None of the good stuff in Taken happens in this movie. Okay, do you think we're going to get to see Jack do karate? I mean, like, we if we pay for it, we can make him do whatever we want, right? One can only hope. Oh, yeah. All right. That's locked in. <laughs> I bet that guy <laughs> at least believes he's good at karate enough for us to be like, do karate, and he'll definitely do something. 100%. We could jump out at him, and he would do, would do attempt to do this karate. Man, <laughs> this man both owns nunchucks and has them on him in on his him waistband all times. right now. They're yes. tucked into his back waistband right Guaranteed. now at his sister's funeral. Possibly maybe the side of his boot. <laughs> One or the other. Yeah, no question. <laughs> Just like Tom. The other side is a butterfly knife that he can't actually open. He just exactly. keeps on yeah. like nicking himself with it. He's like, oh, fuck. How do you open this thing? All right. Well, that, <laughs> that's going to be the majority of the movie. All right. I think that's going to do it for our review of Born into Mafia 2, 3 to come. But that's not going to do it for the episode just yet because we found another terrible movie. Eli, what's on deck? Some friends enjoy an out-of-town rock concert. After some eerie events at their hotel, the friends abandon their night of rest and decide to drive through the night back to their hometown several hours away. However, someone or something follows them home. It's October, baby, which means we're into our Halloween spooktacular with Prey. The name of the movie is just Prey? Pray. Spooktacular. Okay. Is it P-R-E-Y or P-R-A-W? Oh, okay. no, Pray. That's some wordplay right there. That's yeah. good stuff. <laughs> All right. Spooktacular. With that to look forward to, we're going to bring episode 423 to a merciful close. Huge thanks to Cecil for joining us. Cecil, you want to uh, announce the next um, very sexual season liberally? <laughs> what do you got going on? Yeah. Are you going to fist the fucking... Yeah, what's the next thing? I mean, I guess I got to fist the turkey now. I'm going up. So yeah. it's, it's just you got to keep <laughs> gotta getting bigger. It. I'm going to like, I'm going to seductively make a turducken. That's what Ooh. I'm going to do. Turducken? Yeah. Nice. I'm going to make it to porn music the whole time <laughs> with a phone ringing in the background. Yes, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Fantastic. And of course, a big thanks to our Patreon donors for all the generosity. If you'd like to help support the show, you can make a per episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful. And that'll get you early access to an ad-free version of every episode. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scathing Atheist, The Skeptocrat, D&D Minus, and Citation Needed, available in all the podcast places. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Our theme song was written and performed by Ryan Slotnick of Evil Giraffes on Mars. All other music was written and performed by our audio engineer, Morgan Clark, and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Cecil and Eli, I'm Heath, promising to work hard to earn another chunk next week. Until then... We'll leave you with the Animal House clothes. The crew eventually upgraded to the iPhone 7 Plus Max with the Verizon <laughs> Smart Family Plan. <laughs> Vitaly Versace went on to direct and star in a Christian adaptation of Aladdin called Aladdin. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> he made his own Aladdin called no! Aladdin. Mm-hmm. 
If you'd like to buy pictures of Cecil's feet, reach out to us today. <laughs> there is a number, podcast listener. There is a number. Everything's for sale. Sacral. Cecil? Green Crunch. <laughs> Shit, I got it. I got it. Wait. <laughs> I got it. The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2023. All rights reserved. Don't forget that your skin is your largest organ, and the sun can be your skin's worst enemy. Dermatologist-recommended Neutrogena products offer the ultimate protection for your skin. From makeup remover wipes to Hydro Boost Water Gel Facial Moisturizer, BJ's has your entire lineup of Neutrogena skincare products. And now through October 15th, save $4 on any Neutrogena product at BJ's. Love your skin back and save now through October 15th, only at BJ's. Renueva tu estilo de otoño en JCPenney. Descubre grandes ofertas en modelos versátiles que puedes combinar con piezas tuyas, como un blazer y pantalón de pierna ancha Worthington con tu blusa favorita, o un suavecito suéter St. John's Bay con tu camiseta preferida. Y combina una chaqueta Stafford con uno de los clásicos en tu closet. Con un par de piezas versátiles puedes crear múltiples looks únicos y extraordinarios. Eleva tu estilo de otoño y ahorra. JCPenney. Vale la pena.